Hey everyone, I'm Andy Petronic, and this is the Whole Life Challenge Podcast. It's the place we connect with extraordinary people, ones who think differently, who have risen to the top of their field, who have vast knowledge, experience, and insights to share, as well as incredible stories to tell. They are also the ones who have figured out a way to take their life's experience and turn it into something that truly makes a difference in the world for others. These are their stories. Hey gang, it's Andy Petronic, and welcome back to the podcast. This is episode number 133 of the Andy Petronic Podcast. My guest today is the founder of something here in Venice, California called The Human Garage. His name's Gary Lynham. He's Canadian, and he is he's quite the force to be reckoned with in, in the world of healing. He is... He started a program, The Human Garage, that is, is really a radical transformation uh, from traditional therapy um, because it combines a lot of different elements and its intention is to put your body back into a position where it's best at healing itself. And uh, very often, the human garage, let me just tell you, the human garage really has not done, has done almost no marketing of itself. Um, It's got a waiting list. It's very difficult to get in. Um, It has uh, a lot of its clientele are comprised of uh, celebrities or, um, or athletes or people who are really at the end of their rope, who've tried everything else, who can't figure out a solution to whatever it is that's ailing them. And they go to Human Garage thinking, you know, kind of there's no hope. I, I, got, no, I got no other options left. And it's, um, you know, using a combination of assessment techniques and assessment techniques based on your alignment your posture, your walking mechanics, and then therapy, six, basically six sessions of, of initial treatment and therapy, uh, along with then additional chiropractic adjustments and uh, what they call fascial flow, and then neurological and physical training in a gym with, one of, with their, with their um, trainer or one of their trainers. Um, it, it is it's, it's quite the system. Uh, I've gone through the program. One of the things we discovered in me going through the program is I feel almost nothing. Um, it's really kind of a, it's, it's kind of the running joke. Um, Andy, did you feel that? No. Andy, did you feel that? No. Andy, did you feel that? I mean, they stopped asking after a while because it's not that I don't feel pain. I don't feel the results. I don't feel the changes or the shifts that are happening in my mechanics, my body. Um, And I've got a suspicion that some of that is from simple coping mechanisms that I've developed over my life to allow me to keep functioning when, when things are bad, you know, given the fact that I was a Marine, given the fact that I've done a lot of extreme adventuring in the world, uh, you know, I mean, that, that's, I mean, I, I can't really, I don't know why, I don't know why else. I'm just, that's my theory. Um, that that's been my strategy for getting through life. It doesn't necessarily serve me now. And so, you know, that's, that's been a challenge for me. Um, but my wife also went through the program and my wife, my wife literally just called me today and told me how amazed she was. She goes, she gets a, um, she gets her eyebrows done. And, uh, I think it's about once a month, maybe it's once every six weeks. And she said she cannot remember a time and she'd been doing this for a long time. She can't remember a time that she was not in pain after getting up out of whatever contraption or chair or, or, or bench or whatever it is you do when you get in, you get your eyebrows done, um, that she wasn't in some sort of pain. She actually experiences pain every time she gets off a massage table um, after you know this relaxing massage. And both of those have ceased. Um, and uh, cease to be. She's like, it's kind of a miraculous shift. She doesn't really understand it 
and um, but it's been through her work with the Human Garage. So I'm really excited to share uh, Gary's story with you guys, and for you to hear a lot more about the Human Garage this is something you will definitely want to check out especially if you're in any sort of chronic pain. They work with people all over the world. Um, this is not a promotion, by the way, for the Human Garage. Well, it is. <laughs> uh, but I'm not getting paid. Um, there's no referral fees that I'm collecting for doing this. I, I'm just interested in putting out there some of the stuff that I'm exploring and, and learning about and sharing it with you and um, sharing 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 Gary with you. Not only that, I I decided that his therapy is, is, is complex enough to have quite a few of his practitioners in and on the, on the podcast. So, um, look for coming up in April, I'm going to have his wife, Anella Lynam. Uh, she's a breathing expert and a Kundalini yoga master, um, who's a big part of the program and uh, his, his co-founder. And I'm going to have a couple of their therapists that I went through some of my therapy with. I'm going to have them on the program together. Um, I'm going to have their trainer on the program. And um, so it's gonna, there's going to be a series of stuff about the Human Garage because I, I think there's value in it to hear, uh, to learn about these different aspects of their system. The, that that are are valuable for you, whether you go to human garage or not, it's not really required. Um, otherwise, I why you know why bother? So um, there you have it. There you have it. That's coming up. Um, you guys all know if you've been listening. Um, even if you haven't been listening, I've got a monthly newsletter that I publish. And if you are interested in subscribing, some of the things I share on that on that newsletter are some of the, are the things that I'm learning, I'm watching, I am um, experimenting with. I've got an amazing email app. I, I you know I've tried God knows how many email apps over the years, and I can't believe I finally have found one that is radically. Uh, changing the way I do my emails each day, which is shocking. And it's, it's not really, it's, you know, it's, it's not, um, well, I'm not going to really tell you more other than you're going to have to subscribe to my newsletter. If you want to find out more about this, um, this app. So there's no, it's a free newsletter. It comes out once a month only. So it comes, hits your inbox on the first of each month. And, um, it's very actionable. It's very pithy. So sign up, go to andypetronic.com and, um, sign up for the newsletter. Um, I want to make sure you guys all know that, that, um, the good kitchen is our sponsor and, you know, I continue to be amazed at the value and the quality of the food that I get from the good kitchen. Um, I just opened a meal yesterday that I really was not looking forward to eating, uh, which is kind of surprising. I mean, it, you know, I get, I got these meals stacked up in my fridge and I usually just grab the top one on the shelf and, uh, look at it. And sometimes I don't even really look at it. I just open it up and I start eating it. A lot of times I don't even heat them up. They're designed to be heated up, but I don't necessarily heat them up. And I don't remember what this is. Some sort of an Irish, um, something, now I'm not remembering what it was, but it was freaking delicious. I mean, I, I wanted seconds and thirds and of course it's pre-measured portions. And so I ate what I, what I ate, but you know, it, I would just recommend a lot trying it. If you've never had high quality, sustainable, organic, whole life challenge compliant, um, meals that will, you can customize to based on the type of eating you do. If you've never given anything like that a try, especially if it's just for lunches, you know, like five lunches a week or three lunches a week, I don't know what their minimum order is, but it it is really, really worth considering to try. So you get 15% off your first order. If you use the link, thegoodkitchen.com forward slash WLC. Um, So do that. I highly recommend recommend it time for fan of the week time for fan of the week my fan of the week is a person or yeah it's a person who's written a review in itunes if you haven't heard me say it before it's the way this podcast gets to be 
bigger, broader, and grow its audience share. In addition to you guys sharing this with people that you know, if, 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 something, if I'm talking about something in the podcast that you think one of your friends would really benefit from hearing, please send them a link to the podcast because really the, the grassroots method of growing this thing is really the only way it grows along with getting reviews in iTunes. So um, I read a fan of the week each week and if you'd like your review read, um, or if you'd like the opportunity to become fan of the week, you gotta gotta leave it in iTunes. So you can go to um, bitly.com, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Andy Petronic Podcast and navigate your way to iTunes. And it's really very simple. Go to ratings and reviews, click on rate the podcast. You can rate it four stars, five stars, whatever stars you want, uh, and then write something. If you've got negative feedback for me, I prefer you not leave it there. I would prefer you just send me an email and maybe we can address something that's going on that's not working for you. Uh, but if you've got good stuff to say, I would really super appreciate the review. The fan of the week this week is Scott Zagarino uh, in the, in the, in the world, in the, um, I can't think of the word I was going to say. Full disclosure, in the essence of full, not essence, in the, oh, whatever. There's nobody here to ask. I'm just here by myself. So um, full disclosure, he's, a, he's an old friend of mine. We haven't spoken really much over the past couple of years, but um, he knows an awful lot about me, and um, uh, and he, he says a little bit of it in his review. Uh, it's a five-star review. It says, the real deal. There is no substitute for direct experience, and Andy has spent his life with his feet in the dirt from the Marine Corps in Iraq and Panama to opening one of the first CrossFit gyms in the world. When Andy speaks, it isn't from theory or an opinion. It is from direct experience that can only come from being in the thick of things. My highest recommendation for a podcast subscription. Thank you, Scott. And um, Scott, if uh, like I, I make this offer to everyone, you want a t-shirt? If you want a t-shirt, let me know you heard me read the podcast, read your review on the, on the podcast. So um, there you have it, folks. Um, we're going to get into the, into the episode. There's, no, there's nothing else I really want to cover. Hey, can you guys remember this? Listen, the full show notes are on the website, wholelifechallenge.com forward slash podcast. And there's a lot in there. There are links. There's information. There are um, there are resources. There, uh, Gary actually can is going to provide me with a link for you guys if you want to get in. Get if you want to go in to make an appointment with the Human Garage, even if it's a they, a a long distance appointment. Um, they like I said, they have a waiting list, so. He will get me a link that will put you at the closer to the front of the line, which would be super awesome. I will put that in the show notes. So check that. Um, A few more of the highlights and the conversation we have about gravity and atmospheric pressure, how it affects your body. You ever think about that? Meridian lines in your body, how they're. Those are, they're basic, they basically show hidden connections from one point to another point in your body. They explain a lot of things. Um, they're you know, used in, in Eastern medicine, in Eastern, you know, like um, acupuncture, quite a lot. Don't use them a lot in the Western, Western um, world in terms of health and well-being, but we're starting to, and they use it a lot. They use meridians a lot in their treatment. Um, Oh, we talk about water and dehydration and how important water is and not just purified water. It's got to have mineral content in order for your body to absorb it. So it's not just drinking more water. It's drinking more water that your body actually absorbs and how critical that is for basically everything in your body. Anyway, look, I could. there's a huge list of things that we talk about in the show notes. Go to the website, check them out, and... Uh, but I think at this point, I've been rambling now for a while. Let's get Gary into the podcast, shall we? Gary Lineham from the Human Garage, thanks for being here. Uh, thank you for having me. It's been an awesome experience so far, getting to know you. And, you know, it's, it's funny because right before we, I hit record, I'm like, Gary, I, was, I have this problem. 
<laughs> what the hell is the human garage and how do I describe what it is? You know, for, for years we actually didn't even, um, we didn't put up a website because we couldn't describe it. And we also had uh, quite a large waiting list all through the, the number of years. It, it's really different because everybody's looking to anchor their conversation into something that they already know. Like, are right. we chiropractors, right. physical therapists? No, we're none of those. And so the best way to explain why it's hard to explain is if you were like blind and I had to explain color to you, how would I explain it? It's because you have no basis or no reference to it. And so we have to look for other ways to, to kind of communicate that. So our strategy for the first couple of years was not to tell people about what we did, but just to let people tell their stories about what happened to them. The result. The, the result. result. And, right. and the reason why that works so well is because we have such high results. And yeah. we're in the you know, high 90s uh, for physical pain in the 75% range for like disease pathologies, uh, digestive issues, bloating gas, uh, you know, the normal things that we, people go to naturopathic doctors or dietitians or, or health coaches for. So by well, do, ha- how do, why do people come? Like, do they come because their friends have said, wow, I, I, I was at the end of my rope. I didn't know how else to cure myself, fix myself. And I went to the human garage and I was, and I healed. Like how, what? what? Well, <laughs> I, I, I guess that's kind of where it started. I mean, yeah. It wasn't, the human garage wasn't supposed to be a business. It was just a, th- it was just me trying to figure out how to fix my stuff. What was wrong with you? Uh, well, so taking back. I mean, t- that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on whether you're asking me or my yeah, wife. That's right. <laughs> I, I have the same problem. <laughs> Uh, we met your wife on the way in. She was great, and uh, she was she was on her best behavior. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the the funniest part about um, uh, my story is is it's just a normal story. A lot of people have these things. It's I was a bodybuilder. I came out of high school, and right out of high school, I went to the nationals. Um, I just had some. You were competitive bodybuilder, not just bodybuilder, not not a hobby. Yeah, yeah, and I actually, actually won the Nationals. And, wow, uh, and in, Can- in Vancouver, in, in, in Canada? Yeah, I was in Canada, yeah. Uh-huh. And um, so um, so the issue, and the funny part is, this is actually before, like, internet and all that. This is in the 80s. Yeah. And um, I fell under a squat, and the squat uh, was a 600-pound squat. I was just trying to, you know, young guy, just trying to prove how, how tough I was. With a Smith machine, with a bar, free bar? Free bar, uh-huh. and, I, and I fell over and torqued to my right. So it was like, you know, when the, when the, all the weights come off one side, Yeah, basically that's what happened and, um, <clears throat> caught me off guard. My spotter wasn't, wasn't ready for it. Exactly. Right. 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 And, uh, so I torqued over to my right side, all the, all the, uh, weights fell and, and I hurt my back and it was just, you know, one of those injuries I'm out for not moving around very well for a couple of weeks. And I thought nothing of it and started to go back, but I started having issues and I started, uh, treating those issues. And for the rest of my adult life, I would basically it was two to three times a week at some sort of therapy trying to fix it. And mm-hmm. as a matter of fact, like a lot of people who have chronic pain or chronic issues, I spent the majority of my time actually going from therapy to therapy. And um, and sometimes things make me feel better. And I had a therapy, you know, there's, I'd have a therapy for a while, like chiropractic of a certain type would work for a while. And then I would try another one. What was <clears> it like radiating pain? Was it a bold, was it disc pain? Was it nerve pain? Was it, what kind of issues were you having? Well, a little bit of everything. Um, has a lot of functional pain and tension. Um, it was, my pain level was somewhere between a four and a nine for the better part of 20 years. So I was always in wow. pain of some sort. And, um, uh, and, and were, you, were you working at the time? Working and I'm working out. Doing, I mean, what were you, wor- what did you do for a living? Well, that's funny. I was doing, I was in the technology business. After. <laughs> huh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, and that, but that's, that's a funny, we can get into that as to, as to how I got into healthcare. Um, uh, but the, the funny part was, is that, uh, you go from therapy to therapy, just trying to resolve your issues and, and trying to understand what the issue is. And the biggest part was understanding what the issue was. Um, it got to one point where I had a chiropractor teach me chiropractic um, very aggressively over a short period of time because I just thought if I knew or understood what they understood, mm-hmm. that maybe I could figure my own problem out. Yep. And uh, I, was in a, I was in a position where I just wasn't able to figure it out. And uh, through the course of years, I just kept getting, uh, you know, my back would go out once a year, and then twice a year, and then three times a year. And, and then one year in particular, it went out 10 times. And basically, every time it goes out, you're, you're basically laid up, not moving around for two weeks. And uh, that combined with a lot of uh, neurological distress. So no more bodybuilding. You weren't, you weren't doing any of that. I trained 
my whole, my entire life. As a matter of fact, working out is what was stabilizing my body to mm-hmm. some degree. Mm-hmm. And you, you'll see a lot of athletes like this. If they stop working out, they're going to pain. Yeah. yeah. And so what they're doing is their body's holding that core structure. Mm-hmm. And if you are in that position, it's something that you need to deal with right away. Because if you're if working out is your solution to stay out of pain, then your body's your body's holding these tension patterns and pain patterns. And you're overriding it. Working out is your drug or your cure right, or whatever. Right, right. And it's not a good solution because eventually you, 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 you're not going to be at one point in your life. It's not going to happen. Yep. And then that's when it starts to cascade. Um, so, so what happened was is that um, uh, around, around 2008, it started to really start to peak up for me. And by 2010, I had, a, I had just so much neurological distress. So I had a number of concussions, car accidents. Uh, I got hit by a baseball bat when I was a young, you know, six years old in the head and just repeating concussions. Well, just the total t- uh, t- wear and tear of my body got to a point where I was now um, looking at, um, uh, uh, I was trying to use a computer. That's the best way to say it, is I went to open up a computer and I couldn't remember how to use a web browser and it scared the living daylights out of me. Um, what, what do you what do you it, mean? You couldn't remember how to use one. Well, like just, I, I, I don't even. That doesn't even compute. <laughs> You're in the technology business. Yes. Yeah. I, I got it. That's that's the thing that freaked me out. And um, you look looked at the screen and you just were. Confused. I couldn't like, connect with how to use the web browser, how to open it, huh. and it was is neurological distress, and huh. uh, that was the peak because when your body's in pain, it causes it causes pain in your brain as well, neurological pain. You know, we have this, this belief that we're disconnected. Uh, the traditional media says that, you know, the brain's in charge and the body's a meat suit and nothing happens unless the brain says something. Well, scientifically, that's not true. I mean, uh, scientifically, the brain is a command center, but it's not in charge of the body. It's not the only thing. And we know that now. There's more science out there to, to, to verify that the brain is not in charge than there has ever been science to say that the brain was in charge. And uh, so, you know, you see this a lot with um, professional athletes, especially boxers and fighters, like Muhammad Ali, like their neurological disorders as they get older, mm-hmm. like Parkinson's stuff. Mm-hmm. So if you think about it, if you put your hand on a table and you smash it with a hammer, you think you have a soft tissue dif- damage in my hand. Well, you're also creating brain damage. They're connected. It's, that's, the part, that's the part I want you to understand. Hmm. The entire body is one organism, and and if there's pain in one area, every other part of the body feels it and deals with it. And the body's great at compensating around things, uh, but at the core of it, at the core of it, it's all connected as one unit. And for us to start breaking it apart and saying it's the nervous system, the central nervous system, peripheral, it's the heart, um, and we've done that in medicine. <clears throat> we've done that in medicine. We've broken up the body into multiple different pieces Mm -hmm. and to at at what cost right because you can't work on like you don't go to a mechanic and one does a carburetor one does the spark plugs and you know one does (laughs) it just doesn't happen that way you have to look at the entire unit and so the body has to be treated that way so breaking it up is just not a good strategy and that's not just a human body it's just a normal uh normal thought process for anything you have to deal with in this life well is this something you already knew when you were in this pain uh, in 2009? Not, not even, a, no, not even close. I okay. was, I was like a lot of other people. I was just going from person to person and practitioner, to practitioner. Yeah. And they were all giving me different, different advice, which is part of the problem. You know, yeah. doctor said one thing, ortho said another, chiropractors all said different things. Um, we had, um, uh, body workers. I was at naturopathic doctors, <laughs> Agoscu, Rolfing, Feldenkrais, uh, you name it. I've been through every program that you can possibly imagine. And I did this not only in, in the United States and North America, but I went overseas to try and fix these issues as well. And each one, and I got more and more confused. And finally, I started actually deciding that I'm going to document this stuff. And in documenting, what I mean was I started <clears throat> learning, like when I go from one chiropractor to another, I would learn everything. I'd listen to the guy, record it, and I'd go into the next one. Because if the first one couldn't help me, I went to the next one. I didn't want to start off, not at the beginning. I want to start it off yep. somewhere along the line. Yep. Because I've just, and you know, after I'd gone through 100, 150 chiropractors, I just was figuring that, and that eventually one day I'm going to find somebody who could understand what my problem was. The funny part was, is I never really did. And um, uh, so fast forward into 2010, 
I hit my lowest point and uh, then by uh, this was after another low point after you couldn't remember how to use the computer or the well web the browser? 2000, 2008 is when I was when I started pe- when the issues started peaking but yep. by 2000, uh, 2010 is when <clears throat> is when all the the uh, the neurological stuff started to kick in mm-hmm. and um, and it was uh, I didn't realize at the time you know when you know when you have somebody who's like um, uh, they're if you take somebody who's uh, let's say I'm trying to put my I'm trying to I'm trying to think of the best way to say this. Um, people generally, uh, when they get to a point of pain and they get to a point of discomfort, um, they start they uh, the brain starts uh, functioning slower and slower and slower because it's dealing with all the all the information that's in the body. And when the body's information, when the body's sending too many signals to the brain, it's like kind of like the same equivalent as uh, downloading. Um, everybody downloading at the same time on the internet and the internet's slow. So the brain starts to slow down. But the, the crazy part is, is that, that, um, the person who has that issue, me at this particular time, I didn't see my cognitive decline, but everybody around me did. Right. Right. And that, cause the job <clears throat> of the brain is to make the body, uh, is to adapt us to the environment. Mm-hmm. So I didn't see this downhill slide happening. All I knew is that something wasn't working. Yeah. And, uh, and I remember trying to grasp for words in business conversations and I couldn't find the words. And that's the only thing that it was the only warning I had. Then one day I can't use my brain. I can't work my computer. And I, I rolled over and literally out of fear and, and distress cried for about six hours. I went to sleep, woke up the next morning. And that was when I said, I have to fix this because it's either fix it or not be here. Were you, um, I mean, how are you functioning in life? Like you have kids, you have a wife, you have responsibilities for work. How? How is that all happening simultaneously? You know, I I just would uh, I would just pile pile sorry power through every day. That's basically what I would do. I just power through the day, and um, like a switch, mm-hmm. turn a switch and just say I got to do this. And yeah, I mean we all, <clears throat> we all have situations where we do that, mm-hmm. um, where you just you just continue to work, and so I'd continue to work, and then I would find ways to cope with it, coping mechanisms. And you know, during that time, lots of drugs, lots of alcohol, uh, just because uh, I had to get out of my mind. Yep. Uh, the physical pain causes a transaction to the brain. When we have a pain signal, it goes to the brain. The brain only actually records the top three pains. Anything below three, like the fourth, the fifth, all the way through to you know, average person has 80 or 90 pains. Um, each one of them is not recorded consciously, even though the nervous system still has the transaction. Is it like the eyes that can see... You know, from, from what I understand, you can see way more than you actually comprehend that you're looking at. Correct. Yeah. And that's uh, the, the reticular activating load in the brain is what makes things relevant. So I call it the cash value. <laughs> so you get a red car, you all of a sudden you see everybody who has a red car. Yeah, right. Right. So, right. so we, we think of this brain as being this massive machine, but really it's a filtering mechanism. Because of what you just said, the visible spectrum of light is massive. We only see a small fraction of it. And we feel everything, but we don't know what we feel. And we mm. feel sensations. And we go through the day where we feel high and low, uh, sad. We feel angry and stuff like that. And we, uh, it's just a general tendency, like myself included, is I thought it was me who was feeling all those things. But we are connected to everybody and everything on this planet. And when we feel stuff, it's, it, quite often it's something coming from somewhere else. Whether we're conscious of feeling it or not. Right. Because yeah. as we've established, right. I'm not very sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, at the, you absolutely are on the top end of, of lack of sensitivity for the body. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is not a bad thing. It's a cold, right, but it's right. a. So when I was saying to your to your wife is that you know dancers and gymnasts um, tend to be the most uh, disconnected to their body, not marines for, maybe and maybe marines. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because they because they're dealing with pain mm-hmm. and uh, they dance through it and so they just get used to blocking the signal right um, and that's a learned behavior. But basically, you your brain only consciously focuses on three pains at any given time. The fourth to the eightieth of subclinical are below, below your conscious awareness. Yeah, it's interesting because I I was telling you I did this really hard workout three days ago, and I saw it actually. Every, every but all, all parts of my backside has been have been really painful but when before we came up and you were doing the clicking thing on me yeah i wasn't conscious that my traps were Were, really that sore and you pushed on the trap just a very slight push yeah and it felt like 
you were you jammed your thumb into my trap, and right. I wasn't conscious of that pain at all. That's, and it's that's there. Your coping it's definitely there. But right. you, you used to be a SEAL, right? I was a Marine. Marine, I was a Marine. Marine yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's a um, people have had a lot of pain or a lot of distress, um, had a lot of neurological distress. They become very disconnected to their bodies. They just stop living in their bodies, right? Right. And you've heard this, this thing, you know, live in your body, because um, uh, a lot of us, we spend most of the time in our mind. Not a really nice place to be because the mind's got that little that little voice, that little noise. It just keeps chatting and yep. it just keeps going and circular thoughts and beliefs and it's always talking to you. Mm-hmm. And so when we live in our mind too much, it makes life really, really miserable. If we live in our body and we start to feel more and think less, it's it's just it's a wonderful and feeling uh, freeing feeling. Yeah, right. And so part of what I was doing there is I made your conscious brain be aware of where I was touching. Mm-hmm. As a result, then it can now deal with it. Because that's not one of your top three issues. Right. So if it's not a top three issue, the brain can't deal with it. And the brain needs to be involved when we're making changes in the body. Hmm. Um, So back to the question about the human garage and what we are and what we do. The best way to say it is, you know, people come in and they say it looks like body work initially. Um, But the reality is, is that body work is telling your body what to do. And when I tell your body to do something, it reacts. Fair statement? Yeah. So... What we have done is we've captured that, and that's called the compensation. We've captured it reacts in a it, it, either good or bad. If I if I push on it, you like that, or it push either moves foot, or it pushes back, something, or something. happens. Yeah, something happens. Yes. So every time you touch or in, in, interact with the body, something happens. So what we've what we discovered was a way to encourage the nervous system to fix itself. So what we do is we point out what we see as the problem, and then the then the brain, like on your trap, says, "Okay, that's my problem," and it says, "Okay, now I can deal with it." So it bypasses your top three issues because our top three pains are made up of like 20, 30 or 50, maybe a couple hundred small little issues Mm -hmm. that contribute to one big one. And, uh, and you can't, and the big one is, there's the symptom. So if you've got a pain in your neck, that's a symptom Mm -hmm. and there's always a cause somewhere and the pain never is where, never is where, where you feel it. It's coming from somewhere else. And so the idea was we, we found a way to engage the nervous system in, in solving its own problems because your nervous system is solving the problems. There's no compensation. It is the compensation. So basically we help your body compensate itself back into alignment. Okay. Okay. A little easier to digest. Yeah, that that is. Um uh, it is. And it's still hard to get my head around. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to go back to your looking to the confused look on your face. I want to go back cuz I want to go back to your story. So sure. you woke up that morning, you're like, "Okay, I got to solve this." Yeah. But if I woke up tomorrow morning and said, "I've got to solve the issues that I have going on," I couldn't do it. Because I I mean, otherwise I would have. So you how how did you just decide that and then what you've been trying to solve you had been trying to well, solve I've been it trying for 10 my years, whole life no 20 for years. 20 years yeah. I, i've been going from place to place but i was leaving the care into the hands of others and it wasn't oh. and so part of the the human garage experience is to explain to everybody what's going on in their body yep. show them the muscle show them why it's doing things explain it because one of my biggest frustrations with medicine and with healthcare is that is that you're just told what to do yes and if you question you get uh, you get sequentered right? or or they don't know the answer and they just say just do this because i tell you to do it right right Right, right. Or, and there's lots of things that are said like, oh, that's just the way the body is. Mm -hmm. Every time somebody says that's the way the body is, that's where we start. That's when we kick into action. Well, so what did you do in order to do, like, what was your process to kind of do this? Or invent this, or, well, or figure this out. Yeah, I guess I, you can't nail it down into any, any one thing. It's a lifetime of experiences, but basically, I but found, after that I found day, a guy. After so I found day. a guy in Orange County. His yep. name is uh, Dr. Rubenstein. He was a PhD medical scientist. Uh, he had a master's in kinesiology and pain management. And he had this therapy, and at the time it was called neuromuscular calibration. And of all the places I went in the world, the Orange County was a guy who actually got, he initially got me functioning again. Hmm. And after my first session with him, I was, <clears throat> I had a noticeable difference in my pain, my pain sensations, and it lasted for three days. Uh, and three days is better than, than no days over the course of many years. Yep. So, sorry. No, yeah. No so, uh, so what happened is, is Do that. Do you mean to 
move? Do you want to no, move no, some I'm, stuff I'm good, around? I'm good, I'm good. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so what happened over the course of, uh, over the course of the next couple of years is that I, I agreed to get in business, convinced him to, to open this up. I mean, I'm thinking about it this way. This guy is my answer to not being in pain mm-hmm. and there's only one guy and he's about 10 years older than me and, uh, likely he'll die before me. So I need somebody else to be able to do this. So we, because, you, because the therapy only lasted for you for a few days, like you had to continue to get treated. Yeah. About twice a week. Yeah. And, but I was functioning and mm-hmm. it was funny because uh, parts of the therapy I taught my son and, uh, who's actually here right now. <laughs> and, uh, so it was a part of the therapy on the hand that would keep my brain calm so I could think. And every night uh, I would come home and he would do that for me. And that was one, that was my way of moving forward, but it, it, it got me back in the game. And so uh, what we did is we opened up uh, the Rubenstein Centers. We had two clinics, one in Orange County, one in, uh, in Beverly Hills. Five doctors, you know, roughly uh, you know, dozens of therapists. And what we were doing at that time is uh, I was using the therapy to manage my own issues, but mm-hmm. it wasn't fixing me. And as I wanted to right, find right. out the real problem, um, we started to look at what the real problem might be. We, um, and it wasn't. It, it, it just was not conducive with the therapy we were using. Mm-hmm. There had to be something else. So we actually used to go home to my garage every day. And from about 2 to 7, we would we'd spend in the garage playing around. and Do- You and Dr. Rubenstein? No, no, me and, a, me and one of the therapists. Ah. And uh, so we were just playing around uh, in the garage. And what we would do is we, we had a discovery about uh, it was why my body was torquing. Basically, my, my hips were torquing out all the time. Every time I go to a chiropractor, he's like, okay, I, I got this. So crack, 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 move me around. But the challenge was is that we're just transferring the problem from upper body to lower body. Mm-hmm. And the, everybody, every, every doctor, every therapist says, oh, I got this. I got this figured out. Don't worry about it. Every mm-hmm. single one of them said that. And... Uh, you know, after hundreds of them, it's just like, <laughs> why bother even listening anymore? Okay. Mm-hmm. You become really jaded and skeptical. So, um, so what happened was, is that we started pra- practicing. We had a discovery about how, how, why my body was torquing. And it was to do with the input to my hips. It was one of my adductors. And it, at the time, it took us, I think it was almost eight hours to release it. <clears throat> and it was quite painful. But what the end result was, I stood up and my body started to correct itself. And that was, that was like a big aha moment. And it's like, maybe we've been going about this the wrong way. And we accidentally walked into this process where we could actually get the body to correct itself. And, um, and since nobody had ever done anything like this before, it was such a shift in the thought process. What gives the body the impetus to fix itself? Like, what, what, what is it you do to, to like, initiate that? To well, initiate that. the body's always, the, the brain, the, if you think of what the brain does, the brain is a problem solver. Yep. So the brain doesn't really do anything proactively, and that's why the brain can't be in charge of the body. The latest uh, research on the vagal nerve shows that 90% of the information goes down the nerve from the, from the brain to the stomach, mm-hmm. the gut, and only 10% goes, or sorry, 90% goes up and only 10% goes down. Really? Yeah, and that doesn't sound like The vagal command. nerve goes from the gut to, to the, the brain. brain. Yeah, and 90% of the information goes up, 10% down. It's documented science. So that doesn't sound like a commander. If it was right. a commander, it would It'd have be been... be the other way around. Right. Yeah. Heart Math Institute, if you want to look at them, they said the heart was in charge. They have 15,000 peer-reviewed articles about uh, from mainstream scientists and doctors verifying this. But what their own logic was flawed because if the heart is involved in the transaction, then every organ is. And <clears throat> the in human- the transaction of control, you mean? <clears throat> Yeah, or yeah, evaluation deciding. control. Yeah, yeah. So we started we started t- going down this path, and we realized that the body isn't just this meat suit, and it's not just muscles. It's like all of these organs they actually draw power from our muscular mu- movement, and they also so that's what meridian lines are in Chinese medicine, and those lines are uh, when the organs not working well, those actual meridian lines tighten up as well, causing f- problems with function, gait, and movement. And so we started seeing that the combination, you know, we're, we, were, we recognize that the human garage, we recognize that there, every modality, there's some truth. And um, if we're extracting the truth from the thought process from each modality, and then we're bringing together all, all of the pieces that need to be brought together so somebody can actually uh, can move their body back into an aligned space. And as you, as you know, we have MDs, we have chiropractors, we have our own neurological-based uh, rehab and strength and conditioning, which you got your first taste of yes, today, yep, right? Yep. And that's something else, isn't it? It was very different. Yep, so so very Ryan's different. a master progression specialist. And what a progression specialist is, is if you crossed a neurologist, a trainer, and a PT. 
Right. And uh, so that's for our rehab side. And so we so we have all of I asked I asked a few too many questions for Ryan. <laughs> Where the, the the session went over by like twenty minutes. He was all for, I mean <laughs> Because I he, I don't think he's used to having people that know as much as I do because I've been doing right. it for twenty years right right so, right and you and you know more that see like the difference between you and a pro athlete because we deal with tons of pro athletes yeah the difference between you and a pro athlete is that you're inquisitive and pro athletes who want to perform they want to do the work right so that they can go out and I want to know why exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it took a little uh, yeah it was yeah. So so yeah, it's 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 encouraging. So we've got we've got our, our own fascial workers um, mm-hmm. with our own fascial program. The alignment work, which is, the entire company revolves around the first six treatments, which is our alignment work. And in six treatments, eighty five percent of the people their basic alignment and posture is corrected to about eighty eighty five percent, or as good as you can get <clears throat> in that short period of time. And that's done within the first couple of weeks, and then we spend the next uh, couple of weeks just balancing it off and making sure it stays. And you're at the part where we're doing, we're doing rehabilitative start uh, exercises so that you can actually start moving yourself forward and correcting yourself without us. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing that bothered me about healthcare. It's like, like if, if you're going back to a, to a, a healthcare worker of any kind, doctor, chiropractor, f- massage therapist or whatever, and they're doing the same thing over and over and over again, they we're not fixing the problem. Right, right. And that's and and that's a first clue uh, that you're not getting the care the care that you need, is if you're going and the and it's not changing. Yeah. And if we're doing the same things over and generally the whole field of of natural health care is is re- reliant upon people coming back over and over and over again. The nice part about where we're at Human Garage with thousands of people on a waiting list, literally, we our job is just to get through and get them out and make sure that they have their tools that they're not coming back. Um, and we're just continuing to pr- produce, uh, p- put people through the program, align them, and giving them the the most important part is that is that at the end of this, you're going to know more about your body. You're going to know how to treat it, what to do. When this feels wrong, you're going to have an answer, mm-hmm. and you're gonna, you're going to at least know where to go. Because sometimes the the biggest problem is I just don't know where to go. Yeah, right. Yeah. You don't know where to start. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, we're I'm going through that with Julia now. Is you know she's had these issues since she was pregnant and the you know her back issues from gymnastics and shoulder issues and foot issues and where do you start she's tried a lot of stuff so she's been well, she's kind of like her journey like yours but she wasn't as dysfunctional as you were she wasn't she's not out of her life yeah but um but that's a norm, that's a normal thing for like a high school or college or collegiate athlete stuff like that is is that we get into our 40s and 50s and 60s and we start feeling it it's not about age and that's where we got it wrong it's about how far we are away from proper maintenance Hmm. And, you know, my mom, who was 80 years old, that 75 was basically in a wheelchair. Uh, she came down, she was in a wheelchair. And <clears throat> there's a lot of neurological distress. There was at one point where my, my kids would say, I think Nana's drunk because she can't remember what she was saying. And it wasn't the drunk, uh, it wasn't that she was drunk, it's just that there's so much neurological distress. And now, you know, at 80, she's, you know, up and around and traveling the country, seeing her grandkids and doing the things she wants. And she's got a younger boyfriend, you know, that's the, th- that's the kind of thing that you want. But right. that's just life. And life is really, it's this age, we have a myth, we blame everything on on age as an example i'm getting older that's just because i'm getting older mm-hmm. that is a complete lie um the, you, whether you're whether you're 30 or whether you're 90 you can function good like for example uh, one of the things that blamed uh, especially with males as we get older now it's happening in kids that are 18 19 20 we've got we've got um we've got young men coming in with testosterone counts of 200 300 and 400 what should they be uh should be you know seven eight nine hundred okay and um and my testosterone uh five years ago was 200 and basically 200 is really low like you're losing energy you have to fight through every every moment of the day you have to fight through the day Mm -hmm. um motivation's not there um it affects sex sexual relations all that stuff and uh, today my testosterone counts around 900 which uh according to medicine is actually technically impossible that it that it went up that high at your age, or what's the impossible part? Yeah, because it because it, testosterone or hormone function normally it's supposed declines. to decline with age. Yeah. Right. So th- the problem is, is that we're just we we make a lot of assumptions because people who are old, men who are older have low testosterone, mm-hmm. but we're not asking the bigger question: Why is that happening? Right. In a human garage, we constantly asking why, and when you ask, you know, I remember when my son was a was a little boy, he asked why all the time. Yeah, my but son why? does that right now. But why? <laughs> <laughs> and I, th- I th- what happens is is that we stop them from asking why, but 
by golly, that's the one thing that made Human Garage and this whole thing work is because we constantly ask why. We have a values that we run the business of. The second one is always look for a better way. And mm. that's embedded in our culture. So as you saw, you see people even talking around you while we're working. Yeah, right. And, and even learning while we're working. So well, we're- I've never been in an environment like that. It's, you know, it's really interesting just to paint a picture for everybody listening. You, you go in, you know, normally you go in for physical therapy or you go into a place with a chiropractor and you get at your own private little office and you're in a private room and the, the therapy is going on in a private room. You go into human garage and it's a bit chaotic. There's a lot of people doing a lot of things and everything's out in the open. I and mean, there, there are dividers between the rooms, but it creates this really interesting energy. I don't know if this is on purpose or not, but it is actually, just my experience. It is actually on purpose. You know, it's funny because when we started, we started in a garage. <laughs> yeah. One table in a garage. And then I convinced my wife uh, to one day it was hot to let us use the apartment inside. And then all of a sudden, people just started coming and knocking on the door and calling. And, and so we put a, a table up. We took room. Uh, we had a 900 square foot apartment in Venice. Took the furniture out one of the rooms, put another table in there. And then we took the furniture out of the living room, put two tables. And the kitchen, when you walked in, was our reception. <laughs> and Sarah, who you know, uh-huh. went sit at there. And, and she's like uh, 10 feet away from the therapy. And people are going through emotional experiences. Right. And, and so what That's happened? That's what it, that was my first day in there. I was like, "What is going on in here?" I mean, <laughs> you're, I'm trying to do a postural assessment, and I'm mar- marching in place, and and somebody is moaning on the table over here, and there's <laughs> therapists walking around, and there's a chiropractor doing a chiropractic adjustment, and 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 at first it's a little bit like, "Huh, this is weird." But what I, what I got is the the energy from everything happening feeds. It, it actually helps. It does. Yeah. It it helps. It helps me as a patient yes. feel more like, I don't know, there's some healing going, can there's something I, going I, on. Can I use a word? Sure. Connected. Oh, yeah, connected. Right. So, so what I mean by connected is an interesting experience is that when we go through experiences, I mean, the, uh, the whole idea of being a Marine or being, a, being a, C, uh, a Marine is that you go through boot camp is to put you all through an experience to build you as a team, right? Yeah, yeah. So when we go through trauma uh, together, it bonds us. That's a natural human nature. Yeah. And so when we're releasing trauma in the environment of the garage, it bonds you with the people that are there. Yeah. Again, that was, it's, it works really well and that's it's designed exactly as it is, but it was an, it was not a conscious thought. It right. was like, we were right. in a, we were in a little apartment. You don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. And then, but when we moved there, we did have a choice. Originally I was going to put rooms up and uh. then this young girl, she was like uh, 12 years old, maybe she said, she asked me. She goes, um, uh, well, you guys are moving. Are you, it's not going to be like a doctor's office, is it? You know, with all the rooms. And, and I said, w- why would you say that? Because exactly what I was doing. I was just sketching it out. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, because we like coming here. We like the energy. We like it. And this girl, a young girl said this to me. And so I asked her mom and sure enough. And then for the next couple of weeks, I was asking people, you know, what do you like? Do you, why do you like this? And, and I found that people, this was a bonding experience that created a community. Yeah. You know, you came from the CrossFit community. It's one of the strongest fitness communities in the world. And, uh, and the interesting thing is when you have a, a strength in a community, it supports everybody. Yeah. You go in a CrossFit gym and everybody's high-fiving and I saw you. And, and this, is, this is the same kind of feeling that happens when you're at the human garage. You walk in and people are high-fiving you and hugging you and stuff yeah. like that. And it's, it's just totally different. And you know, why, does it, why does the experience of getting better have to be so sterile and so... Yeah, you know, right. Yeah, right. Like, we, like our values are really simple. Uh, it's to make things simple. It's always look for a better way, be fanatical in our beliefs, honorable in our relationships. Um, <clears throat> uh, did I miss one? Oh, yeah, and have fun. And, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and the, 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 the cool part about it is, is that going to work is fun. And right. going to work, we're learning something every day. Like our therapy has changed. Mike Bledsoe, I was just talking to him yeah. the other day. Yeah. And so he's been, he comes every three months and we end up doing a little bit of work and we'll sit down and talk. And, and um, one of the interesting things is, is that he, I, I don't see it from his point of view. I didn't see it from his point of view, but he's the outsider coming back in. Mm-hmm. And, the th- and he says, every time I come, the therapy like literally is almost completely different. And so it's always evolving. Yeah. And I don't think that, the, you know, that's the, one of the things that we've basically stopped doing is using protocols. And, you know, like you're going to work on this, this muscle does this. And, and, and the way I saw it was this, is that 
We're basically 75% water. So we're like a bucket of water moving through time and space. And there are two things that were never thought about when we talked about the human body as imposing factors was gravity and atmospheric pressure. And they're the two most constant forces on the human body. But they change the relationship of how our muscles and how our brain and how our organs interact with each other. And like when you're like, you know that your antagonist to your quad is your hamstring, right? Mm-hmm. But when you stand up, that changes the relationship because now they're working together to keep you standing yeah. with your calves, your, your lats, your back, your, uh, your lats, traps, and your, and your chest. So those are the muscles for forward backward stability, but they all work together when, you, when they change the relationship in gravity. Yeah. But if I'm sitting there doing a leg curl or a leg press, it's just quad and or hamstring. And so the idea was we started seeing the fact that people are just moving through time and space and and gravity is pulling down on them and they're engaging their muscles, actively engaging them against gravity, which creates tension. So if you push against gravity, there's more tension. So the highest point of force is where your feet contact the ground. Gravity pulls pulls through your body and pulls force into the ground. But the highest point of tension is the top of your head. Because right. that's, the, that's the highest point of engagement. Like a rubber band. Yeah, so just step on a rubber band, a uh, TheraBand, and push it all the way up above your head. And you'll see as the farther you go away from your floor, the more tension is created. And right Isn't in the, the tension v- equal through the rubber band? <clears throat> or is there more at the top? No, it's actually, if you, you, if you do this, you'll find that the tension right around the waist is the least. Oh, right. Our, that makes our, that we're right. bipeds. So our, our hips are a center of gravity. So it's funny when you think about this, right. we, we just have to recontextualize the way that we think of things. Like we think about running with our feet, but that's not true. We run with our hips and our feet land. Yes. Right. So all motions generate from the hips. So if the hips are balanced, you, you, everything you hit a baseball goes. with your hips. Right. Yes. And, and they say this. Swing. We say this in sports. We say this yeah. in all kinds Dad, of things. My son is going through this. <laughs> serious baseball swing training and i mean it's it's, it's all the stuff i've been telling him but yeah. he hears it better from another coach but he's now he's turning his hips and he's getting it it's uh right but we we know this and yeah. we know these things yeah, yeah. and we use them but we're not understanding why they work and there are right. thousands of things like this in the human body and the human experience that we just do because that's the way we do it without understanding how it works and when so you, if there's more tension in the rubber band at the top and the bottom yeah. and this middle is this is kind of like our bodies yeah yeah right? that, yeah that's just a demonstration of our body yeah right because you step on a rubber band you stretch you you stand up and you stretch and lift your arm high in yeah, the sky the middle of it could <clears throat> wobble yeah, and you, you'll feel it. You can do something, you feel it, you grab the, the TheraBand, you'll feel that the least tension is right around the waist. And so what happens is, is because we have opposing forces, your, your engaging is as, uh, your muscles like, uh, upward is, a, is a, a force, and gravity is pulling you down, so it makes sense that the center point is where those two forces meet. Sure. And, and that thought process was not a thought process that's in, that's in anywhere in sports, sports medicine, evaluation, or whatever. And as we started to realize that, then it started to change the way we looked at the human body. And we've even got a step further here recently, and you've seen, I've done a little bit of work, but I'm going to do a lot of work on you the next time you're in. Um, you've seen, uh, you've st- you started to see things like uh, people standing up and were uh, down on their calves or their quads working on them while they're sta- actively engaging. They're yeah, standing. standing up, yeah. And the reason why... I've never seen anybody do manual therapy on someone <clears throat> standing up. Right. And so the reason why is because like, if I contract my bicep, the entire bicep is being used. But when I stand and walk and move, I'm only using portions of that. Yeah. And it moves around. Yeah. And, and the, the muscle fibers move around, but you can feel a tension line, and that tension line against gravity is basically constant. And so if you release the tension against gravity, then what happens is it reduces the force on the body. So everybody gets off the table and says one thing, I feel lighter. Hmm. And I'm pretty sure that if I weighed them before and after, there's no change in the weight. Right, right. So right. it's how the brain perceives things. I mean, the brain is funny how it perceives and it takes information and inputs it and adapts us. Like, for example, if you're in a car and you're parked and the car beside you moves and you catch it out of the corner of your eye and it feels like you're moving. You've had yes. that experience? Yep, yep. Most people have had that experience. It doesn't matter what the truth is. To your body, you're moving. Yeah. And everything reacts as such. So inputs to the brain are super important. And that's why uh, today you were doing some neurological work, eye work and some vestibular work, because that's how your brain perceives the world. And back to that thing about what the brain sees. The brain has five, the frontal cortex has five basic senses, right? And um, uh, sight, touch, taste, sound, and hearing. And those senses can, can 
be tricked. And that's what magic is and subliminal advertising. Um, it's tricking the senses. And they're very easily tricked, by right, the way. Right. And so if you have a sensory input that's wrong to your brain, then your body is doing the wrong thing. One of my biggest issues is that my vestibular, vestibular is like your inner ear balance, mm-hmm. inner ear canal. My lower right inner ear balance and my lower middle uh, balance our canals those two uh, were off and the hairs were running the wrong way for all those years the little silica hair cilia did, hairs did you somebody tell you that well this is what we found out this is only two years ago because I was up to two years ago I was still doing therapy on a regular basis but I wasn't having I wasn't in pain I was just in discomfort mm-hmm. and I just and I was trying to correct and I couldn't figure out why can't my body just hold this and one of the reasons is because my vestibular was off it made my brain perceive that I was falling to the right. So all my muscles on the left side of my body were engaging, pulling me back. Without having that neurological input, I could go to chiropractors, physical therapists, and stretch and do everything for the rest of my life and never, ever, ever be, be How right. do you fix the, the direction <clears throat> your hairs are running? Well, so that's... <laughs> So that, that was what... The you need a comb. Yeah, you no, need a hair yeah, comb. Hair comb. Ear comb. <laughs> ear comb. Inner ear comb. comb. Inner ear comb. <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, Jordan, you got that? That's our next product. That's right. so, yeah. Inner, hey, hey, I inner thought of it. I want comb. my 10%. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they, if you think... <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, so there are neurological exercises and neurologists generally tend to be able to diagnose. So they have neurological tests that tell you if something is right or wrong. Mm-hmm. So we use a lot of those. Um, and there's also corrections in neurology, but for whatever reason in medicine, they don't give the correction. They just do the test. Okay. Which is bizarre to me because there is a way to correct it. There's a way. And for me, it took about four months to of doing a little exercise, like literally a two minute exercise three times a day for four months and then it corrected. And uh, now how do you keep the faith that you, what you're doing is actually doing something? Well, so for the most people, except for you, they feel something, you feel something. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Jesus, it's so good. So, so, so yeah. for, for me, I would feel the whole left side of my body starting to get tight. The muscles, I could, I could feel it. I, you know, my neck would get tight and then I would do the, the vestibular drill uh-huh. and her exercise and instantaneously you could feel it relax. And it was noticeable. So you know, people generally do things if it feels good. Yeah, right. You know, right. like when we're told to stretch, why don't people stretch? Is because they don't know what to stretch. Mm-hmm. And, they, and, and if you don't know what to stretch, then you're just stretching for stretching. But if stretching makes, improves your balance, your posture, your performance, and you could demonstrate that, then people will constantly do it. So the idea was to give people tools that they could use themselves to help themselves. And it's very demonstrable. And that's the, that's the biggest part. I mean, from the very first second you walk into the garage, you leave, everybody leaves in that, in that first hour and they're just like, wow, what happened? Yeah, right. And that's a common, that's like, I, it's almost never, is, you know, it's almost never a time that doesn't happen. I don't, can't remember one anyways. Tell me, tell me about one of your therapists. So I was getting a, um, <clears throat> is it called fascial flow? Fascial flow, yes. My first fascial flow, I think the therapist's name was Brian. Yes. And he was telling me the biggest thing that he learned or has learned, and I don't know how long he's been with the garage or whatever, but um, was, was something to the effect of how your brain's not in charge, your fascia is. Yeah, so... That was my statement for a long time, and like everything else, it's slightly modifying. Okay. And I'm just saying that your brain, your muscles, your fascia, your organs, your central, peripheral nervous systems, they all have one thing in common. They're all working together to keep you moving through time and space. So instead of trying to decide who's in charge... Let's just look at the body and say the entire body has all these systems that react and and change and interact with each other. Let's get them to talk together better. That's basically what we're doing. Let's Mm. let them communicate better. And that's how come it works. It's just the most holistic approach. We call ourselves in this world of biohacking, right? Mm -hmm. So we call ourselves endogenous biohackers (laughs) because we believe and we use our hands, as you see, very little tools. We Mm -hmm. believe and have been able to demonstrate that most of the fixes is already inside your body. It's just repositioning the way that your body perceives the world that it lives in. So when you do an intense, you know, so one of the treatments that I got, uh, uh, a few weeks ago, and this is not to scare anybody that might be interested in checking out the human garage, but it was pretty intense, pretty painful, and it was on my adductor, like this meridian, yeah, this, yeah. this line, liver, and I was laying on the table. Now, what happens? 
I'm guessing you're trying to get it to release or something. Okay, so if and you then I stand up and like I I just don't. So what, you, what happens if you What's, go if you go along a meridian line like a gallbladder or something like that in uh, Chinese medicine, acupressure, acupuncture, stuff like that. There are traditional point spots like GB35, stuff like this. And those things were accurate for thousands of years. But what we found is, is that along those lines, meridian lines, it, well, maybe actually we should just say what a meridian line is. Sure. Okay. So all the, we, have, we have 10 primary organs, right? Um, and uh, then, then the skin is an organ. And uh, all the organs have a meridian line except for the brain and the adrenals. Interesting thing, about, though, is that the brain and the adrenals do have something in common. They both have a cortex and a medulla. And mm-hmm. when you cut an adrenal in half, it looks like a brain. It, looks, it physically looks like the brain. Hmm. Same type of mass, same type of material. So I've always called that the brain of the body. Where does the uh, where does the um, adrenal sit adrenal live? on top of the kidneys, uh, right, mid chest? You have two um, kidneys. Yes. So you have one adrenal with each kidney. Yes, but they look different. Huh. So here's an in, another interesting part. We've gotten too far off. Come back to meridian lines. Remind me. Okay. Is that um, is that everything in your body that you have two of looks the same and does the same job, with the exception of the adrenals. <laughs> So we oh. ran a little science test and we found out that they actually do something different. And that's a TB. Um, <laughs> How the heck do you test a, that? That's a TBA. Well, I, I'll show you next time you're in the garage. Wow. But we're going to we're going to release we're going to publish these scientific findings. Hmm. Uh, we're just going to publish it in time because that's a really disruptive run. That means that the yep. the whole the whole uh, endocrine model isn't exactly as the way that we say it is. And we have over 100 lab tests, uh, both saliva and, and uh, blood panels that prove this to be true. So we're going to peer review it and put it out there. And it's going to just change the, the entire way the world looks at the human the body. The fact that the adrenals are doing two different things. Right. <clears throat> huh. Wow. Because our assumption is they do the same. So, tell, so let's so go back, back to the meridian meridians. Lines. So, what, who, so the best who way, came up with these meridians? Because they're not I mean, a physical thing, right? Well, it's not like I can point to the line. Well, There's actually, no, actually, they are a physical thing now. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, some, some guy uh, recently last year, he, um, he took and swallowed radioisotopes or swallowed basically radiation. And then he lit, <laughs> and then he lit himself up on a, on a full <laughs> body. He lit himself up on a full body MRI. <laughs> And guess what happened? The, the, all these lines started appearing. Really? Yes. And so what that was doing, it was proving scientific. Is scientific. it dead now from these radio It's not dead yet, but it, you know, thank you for your sacrifice. Right. Yes. Totally. Yeah, wow. You've contributed to humanity. We'll see you the next time around. That's right. <laughs> you know, so you've got these adrenal lines, uh, uh, sorry, these uh, meridian lines, and they are... If, he literally, you can see these lines? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you, but when I work with you, you can feel them. Next time you're in, actually, the better thing is come in and assist me for a day. Okay, and that will be the thing where it'll change for you. Okay, because then you get to feel it on the other side. Huh. So what you'll what basically, if you can imagine this, is that your muscles provide power. So even the engagement of, of breathing, I'm actually breathing against gravity and atmospheric pressure. Yes. Okay, because atmospheric Cause pressure, pressure is pressing on us all the time at all times. Fourteen point seven pounds per square inch, two two thousand pounds on the average human. What do you mean two thousand pounds? Well, if you take fourteen point seven pounds per square inch, you take the the mass area of the human and add it all up. Yeah, add it all up. That's two thousand pounds. Okay, and uh, you can Google that. It's a verifiable. It's a science fact. It's been around forever. So, and we're not even conscious of it because from the moment we're born, we're we're resisting that pressure. Well, we take our we first to. we take our first breath. <sighs> And then we start generating power for ourselves rather than the power coming from the, the umbilical cord. Yep. You see that? That's our first connection away from our parents. Right. And with our first breath, we engage our muscles against gravity and atmospheric pressure to breathe, and that creates power. So when the muscles move, it produces a roughly 0.5 kilojoules of power. And I, I, the, I don't want to get too much on the science of that, but yep. just basically movement of muscles creates energy. That's why we feel good when we move. And that's why we feel bad when we don't move. And this is part of your whole thing. Movement is yeah. is part of a daily function. And that's what we'll get into that and talk about it. But the idea is is that when you're uh, when you're when you're moving, the organs all have like uh, think of the meridian line as a as a wire power wire going down to the different parts of the body. Like the liver meridian goes right from here and the uh, on the bottom of the leg all the way up. Up into the chest. Are they nerves, or are they like yeah. what are what is it? You know, I, 
I think because no one's ever really seen them, I think what it is is I, I really think it's a light energy. I think it's transferring through the fascia. I've shown you some pictures of fascia, have I? No. Um, I shall show you one right now. If you guys want to see something really cool, um, go to fascia magnified 25 times on Google and YouTube. Just type in fascia magnified 25 times? Yeah, on YouTube, yeah. Okay. And you'll see live fascia. And so I had always thought fascia. No, wait. Is fascia the same as connective tissue? Yeah. So, so ligaments are fascia, uh, well, tendons so, are fascia. So connective tissue is, uh, fascia is a connective tissue, but you have ligaments which are still muscular based, but they're coated in fascia. Fascia coats the muscle, goes through the muscle down below and goes all through the muscle. So what we're going to do is... Uh, what do you mean it goes all through the muscle? So fascia is actually inside the belly of the muscle. Oh. And it wraps the muscle, and it wraps all the all the organs. It wraps the brain. Fascia is the only thing that cannot be cut out of the human body. Fascia, like literally, or best way to do is we're looking spin. at an iPad right now with a video. Fascia. So you see the fascia, and you're going to have to look at this if you're if you're at home and you're you're listening to this. You'll want to go and look. What at are these? This. Ten, these look like spider webs. That's the spider webs. Those are water conduits. Fascia controls because we're going to talk about water today and how people are dehydrated. And yep. we're going to show you why. Well, fascia is the main conductor and conduction of water through the body, and uh, and fascia again is is the only thing that cannot be cut out of the human body. It's wrapped in everything. It's through the organs. You mean you can't yeah. get rid of it? Yeah, like you're right. You, you could cut out a bicep, but you right. can't cut out your fascia. You cut out everything in the body, but you can't cut out fascia. Fascia right. only leaves the body when it decomposes. Huh. That's, that's, that's something. That means it's important. So when you do, when so you, you, when you do think, a cadaver... Think, think about that. It, it, that means it's really important. Fascia has 100 yeah. trillion cells. And our, our brain is only 100 billion cells. Fascia is a thousand times more organically dense than the brain. And the way the body works, just simply, is the more d- organic density, the more valuable it is to the body. There's certain things you can cut out. You cut out your gallbladder, you're still going to live. Yep. Cut out your heart, chances are you're not going to live. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think that happened to me in high school once. Got my heart cut out. Jeez, yeah, yeah. that's happened to all of us, I think. So, so look at this, okay? So you see all these things, the fats in the... We got blood vessels, we got fat inside the fascia. Um, but here's the crazy part. Wait till you see what we're operating on. This is a live operation. It looked like a spider web, and what we were looking at right now is the operation on a forearm, and it just looked like a big spider web in the fascia. Hmm. Crazy, isn't it? <clears throat> wow. Yeah, I know. And so, listen, that, that video changed my life because before that, I thought of fascia as cadaver or like chicken, the, the, you know, the, the tissue on chicken um, or like in beef or something like the in, Yeah. And that's the, in my mind, that's what fascia was. And even though I knew it was more, you know, scientifically, until I saw it with my own eyes in live, I didn't really understand it. And fascia has the same chemical composition as a quartz crystal. And it's soft, like I'm touching the fascia on your arm right now, it's soft, right? Look at that, that's all fascia underneath the skin. And that's soft, right? But it becomes as hard as tensile steel in a second, in a millisecond. Right, right. And fascia is, is the main engine that creates the structure that allows our muscles and everything to move through and around and work together. <clears throat> huh. I know. It's like when you look at it that way, it starts to change the way you see the human body. That's the cool part. And so what happened is back to the meridian lines is that yep. it, I believe, and you see as you light that up, it seemed like there, there's information traveling there. You can see that. And so I was starting to believe that fascia, uh, that the meridian lines were just like uh, were basically uh, light lines that go through the body, but they're transferring power. We know that. Mm-hmm. So what, we, what happens is and what we're going to be doing on you the next time that you're in is organ work. Okay. And in doing organ work, what we're doing is we're the power line that goes from the organ all the way through the body. And we, as we move our body, it powers back. Uh, it, it drives power back to the organ. So if the body part is not working right, then the organ doesn't get all the power and has to get power from somewhere else. And the other part of it, too, is if the, if the organ's not functioning, then guess what happens? The... the the, f- the meridian line tightens up. So if your liver meridian goes up your left leg here, up here, if that's tight, when I walk, it's what it does. It shortens my gait. Yeah. So it affects the muscle. It affects the nerves. It affects, it affects everything, every part. Of- everything. It's one system. And if, unless we huh. start treating the body as one system, we're never going to fix the problem. We can't. Yeah, right. yeah right. It's just, this is just logic. Right. 
you know, and somewhere along the line, we just stopped using logic when it came to the human body. And I'm not sure where that happened. But we've been doing this for 3,500 years. And remember, the, th- working th- the way theories work or science is... We it sounds a, th- a lot like acupuncture. I mean, it, you know, like you hear acupuncturists talk about the meridians what? and the gallbladder and the liver and the... It is. This is Chinese medicine. Yeah. Okay. But, I, you know, who knows uh, how it came about? The Chinese have... But cu- you guys aren't using curated. needles. No, 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 no. Right. And that's right. the whole part is that, is that, is that the, uh, the meridian points that are used in Chinese medicine, acupuncture, acupuncture points, they are all, not the only points. And we're seeing blockages that are not on those points, the traditional ones that they're taught. And so what we're doing is investigating. We're removing the blockages and then all of a sudden things start working better. And and it's noticeable. It calms your nervous system. You breathe better. You have more energy instantaneously. And when we decompress an organ and work the meridian line, you can measure, you can do like a panel, uh, a clinical panel, like a blood panel or something like this. And you could do one before and after and it changes. Hmm. So it so literally when we decompress the liter, liver, it'll feel hard and and stiff, kind of almost like this to some degree. And then after we're done decompressing it, it actually is just soft in the way it's supposed to be. Hmm. And, and that's, that's, that's part of the craziness is that I, I think just generally along the line is that there was you know, thousands of years ago when Chinese medicine was, was uh, invented or discovered or however it came to us, mm-hmm. um, it, was a, it was the most effective way, I believe, to, to help the human body uh, heal or to move or to stay, stay well. And things changed, you know, over the last 50 to 70 years, 50 years in particular, we've had chemical intrusion into our diet. And, and I think that the, the single largest problem with the human beings today is really the chemical intrusion. And the chemical companies who have lots of money have, have sponsored tons of false science mm-hmm. and tons of controversy. And we got, they got, we're fighting against paleo versus vegan versus, you know, this system, this way of thinking, this way of breathing. Everybody's fighting about what to do for the human body, but collectively not, not, n- none of us are really fighting against um, uh, the real problem, which is chemical intrusion. Mm. You know, um, uh, the owners of Cafe Gratitude, Ryland is, uh, so I met with Ryland the other day. He has a foundation called Kiss the Dirt, or Kiss the Ground, sorry. And um, Kiss the Dirt sounded pretty good too, didn't it? <laughs> it does. It all sounds good. So Kiss the Ground, and, and they're talking about how our, how our, our ground, our soil is being contaminated because once mm-hmm. you put a chemical, it doesn't go away. It's not like it just disappears. You flush it down your toilet. It's not gone. It's gone from your life, but it's not gone from the earth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And so part and of And it's the, not really gone from your life. Right. So part of the issue that we started to see is that, okay, we blame, let's say, and we're, we're really quick to blame things as human beings. We mm-hmm. want a single point of accountability mm-hmm. for everything that happens. It's just not the way. It's a, not that's the why, way it works. Right. That's why diagnosis does not work. You know, the time that people come in, you see the changes at the crush. Mm-hmm. If I gave a physical diagnosis when somebody came in, by the time they leave, it's already invalidated. Yeah, right. So why diagnose? So we're constantly assessing. And this process of, of assessing the human body constantly while it's moving is what's 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 furthering the thought process because we're seeing changes. And the other thing that's neat is sometimes there's two or three or four people working on you at a given time. Yeah, right. And the reason why it's important is if I'm a one-on-one relationship, a one practitioner, one person relationship as constant doesn't work. It doesn't work well. I mean, there's lots of great practitioners out there and I'm not insulting them, but when you put a second and a third person in there, you start to notice things that you don't notice otherwise. Like for example, if I'm working on you, Andy, and, uh, and I get hot, you get hot? You know, if I'm working on you, all of a sudden I start sweating. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. But if uh, three of us were working on you and three of, you start, three of us start sweating at the same time, that means something then. So you're able to start to, to see through other people things that you wouldn't see if you're actually focused on working and trying to help somebody. Right. And that's where all of the science is starting to come from because we're able to see things. And, and, and uh, you're just starting your journey. So as you'll yeah. see, like Bledsoe, if you follow uh, some of the stuff that I've done on his shows, you'll, um, you'll see that every time he comes back, he talks about what's new. And how it's changed and how every three months it's like completely different from what it was before. Right, right. And you'll see that. Okay. Um, because we're constantly evolving and I think that's the way it's supposed to. You know, we, one of the issues that we have with uh, what we see and we blame um, the, the, uh, the texting and computers for all this, this functional neck and shoulder issues, right? Mm-hmm. And yes, those things contribute greatly. But there's yet a bigger problem. So um, if you go back, um, you know, four or 500 years ago, I went and looked at, because I'm trying to understand how this all started breaking down societally from a societal per, uh, point of view. And I went looking at portraits because you don't have pictures from four or 500 years ago. Um, 
And I realized really quickly that port self-portraits uh, are not really real because uh, you're paying somebody, if you're short, you want to pay somebody to paint your picture, you're going to have beer. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Right. But what I did notice is that when they painted like a city scene and there'd be like a cent- center of a town, town center or town hall or something, and they showed people walking around, I saw the most bizarre thing. Everybody had perfect posture. Oh, really? Right. So wh- how did we go from there? How did you notice that? I, I, was, I was doing it with intent. I'm trying right, to understand. Right, I'm right, looking for right. the problem, right? right? And if you're looking for something, you're going to find something. Yep. So I was looking hard at, at trying to figure this out, and it just shocked me that I saw this. And then I realized that you know, when the real problems started happening, like when do all the disease pathologies, and I mean, we are supposedly the, the healthiest we've ever been, but that's not true. Um, we're actually the sickest we've ever been in, in society. We've got more access to healthcare, more access to doctors, more access to nutritionists. We've got information online and people are sicker than they've ever been. Like we test everybody at the garage, like yours. Mm-hmm. We test everybody and people are not going to a doctor saying I'm sick. So the data that we have is different than any other, any other medical data that's out there because we're testing people who feel that they're healthy and active and engaged in their life. And uh, we started testing when we were finding that we couldn't fix the physical aspects of some people's bodies if their chemical and the biochemistry wasn't set up properly. So we started testing for that reason to try and help them understand or help us understand why they couldn't. Testing the internal. Right. So the saliva and the urine. Saliva, urine. And, you know, we have MDs. Sometimes we have MDs. So we can do any test. Any doctor can do anywhere. Yeah. But we start off with this gateway test, which is which is really about a health and it's how health is generated. And it's our first test. It tells you how hard your body's working to show you what you would see in your blood test. So it's it's is that the test I took? Yeah, it's the test you took. Okay. And um, and when when that uh, when we start uh, start testing people um, about four years ago, uh, about one in five people had autoimmune symptoms. Hmm. Today, one in two. Wow. 75% of people are not digesting or absorbing nutrients. Now, that you eat it, it comes in, it goes out. That doesn't mean you absorb it. Right. Uh, 82% of our base are chronically dehydrated, and the athletic part, as we, uh, we talked about a little bit, uh, even, even greater. You know, one of the, so we can move into that discussion if you want to. Yeah, no, I, I wanted to, because that was my next question is, tell me about water, because we, <clears throat> we, you know, we've had quite a few conversations, but we've never, you know, most of my interactions with the garage, this is the first time I've hung out with you outside of the context of what are you going to do for me? Because I get in there and I, you start wailing on me or, you know, and I, I use lovingly, of course, but you know, I, I, I go into a whole different place and I can't really, I'm not in the place to ask you intelligent questions. I'm getting worked on. Or, well, cause it's the, cause everybody leaves high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and that's an experience is that you're you're high on your own supply. Yeah, and when we do our work, the body produces dopamine. Everybody feels like a million bucks when they leave. They're yeah. like on a kite. They're walking, and it's a natural high. It's a really bizarre experience the first one or two times. But it's all been focused on you know everything you've done has been focused on me, and I haven't really been had a chance to ask you some of the questions that I that I have. And we the, one of the first things you said to me was this water, this hydration thing. And you know one of the things in the whole life challenge, we say hey drink thirty percent of your body weight in, wa- in ounces of water. We we know it's this is without having talked to you about it. My feeling was that it wasn't enough, but it was enough right. to keep people conscious. Yes, like hey, you should be drinking more water. Most people, that's more than what they drink. So what if we changed it from drinking more water to stay hydrated? And because hydration, well, people just don't know what that means. Part of how hydration is water. The other yeah. part is how it stays in your body. Yes. So these are all the alkaline ions. Our body. Think about our body. It's seventy five percent water. The stats are. Body's 75% water, 92% of our blood's water, 75% of our muscles are water, and 22% of our bones are water. So we're basically a bucket of water, and water needs mineralization for connectivity for signal, right? Yeah. So if there's no signal, like distilled water doesn't conduct as well as mineralized water when you're, when you're putting electrical current or anything through there. That's how bioimpedance works for like doing Correct. your... Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, so the idea is, is that um, uh, if, you are, if you're in a situation where you're just... Uh, you're drinking and you drink too much water because, and I don't know the, I, I don't, the exact science, I think it's one molecule of water bonds with three molecules of sodium. And so if you don't have the sodium in your system, your body will then, uh, t- will, as you drink the water, it will take, it will collect the sodium that bonds with and you pee it out, causing a lack of sodium 
in your system. Then you drink more water and do the same thing over again. And sodium is required to hold the water in your, on your body. So people who are hydrating a lot, that, you know, they come in and say, well, I've been trying to hydrate and do my best. and I'm just going to the bathroom too much. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're drinking lots of water, you're going to the bathroom too much. This is the first clue that something's not holding. Yeah. And that should yeah. be a warning sign. Yeah. Uh, overhydration for athletes is the biggest cause of, uh, of problems. It causes muscle tears. Let me talk about some of the things that happen. Uh, so um, we have people come into the garage. They have diagnoses from doctors. Can I ask you a question real yeah. quick? You just said overhydration, but we're talking about people being dehydrated. So like, well, because, get, because the water takes too the much. minerals out. They're drinking too much. And they're the, not mineralizing. Yes. So yeah. it's... Cell salts, um, minerals, and cell salts, minerals, and sodium. Yeah, and yeah. potassium has to be there too. Okay, I just got reminded the other day, by the way, that I was the one of the original biohackers because I'll tell you this story. We wouldn't have time to cover it today, but um, but uh, but when I was competing back in the eighties, we were like doing massive things with water. We would drain all the water out of our body. You, you I mean, bodybuilders sodium. would do demineralized water, right? To get ready for a competition. Yeah, and we would also drain the water out while we would take massive amounts of sodium and tan every day. Yeah. And then but coming, so that bloats you, right? Doesn't well, that... no, no. The, this before, so we would take the water out. So we would be tanning, drying, drying the body. We would add massive amounts of sodium. So the body rejects it. If you take too much, the body doesn't want it. Okay. So we'd add a lot, massive amounts on. We would do it on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then on Wednesday, we, with no carbohydrates. And Wednesday, we started eating carbs only, and, but no water. So your body's dried like a, like a raisin. <laughs> and then you, uh, then you go to your weigh-in. And I remember this because when I went to the Nationals, I weighed in at 199 and it was at 217 the next day. And the way we do is we take multiple grams of potassium uh, on Friday, the day you weigh in, and I weighed it at 199.7. And then I went back to the room and drank distilled water, but with, and that's all I had was still still water. And what happens is you puff back up into your skin, that makes you look ripped. Yep. Now, back in the 80s, no one was doing that. Now, I mean, the guy who invented that is a guy in Calgary, Canada named Tim Butts, and I was his first student. Wow. Yeah, and so he got me to the nationals and, and meddled me. Because of the fact that I was, I weighed in at 199 and I was competing at 217. It's just not fair, kind of. But yeah, right, yeah, right, but, right. But it, but it was the the body hack, right? Yep. So, so playing around with water, we have all these people come into the garage, and they have all these diagnoses. It's like I have high cholesterol, and very, very, very. Uh, that's like one of the major diagnoses. One of the major statins are out there everywhere. Eighty um, percent of the time, it's dehydration. And so, so what happens is, is that when you well, you've got to believe, first of all, if you go back to that for a second, you got to believe that cholesterol that that the idea that cholesterol is a problem to begin with is a, is necessarily a problem. It is a problem. Yeah. So let's let's talk about what happens when the body's dehydrated. The the cells themselves are intelligent. They perceive threats, so they hold on to the fat. The to they hold it on to it because they need to protect themselves. And the body's potassium levels go up because the organs fear imminent danger so they start then the potassium is what holds the water and the soft tissues in the organs and so these things have to be in balance if anything's out of balance it just starts working wrong we're 75 percent water we need to deal with the fact that that we need to have water in balance it's like any ecosystem anybody who grows i mean there's a lot of people that grow gardens and plants and uh, i was with the guys at mind pump <laughs> and uh, one of them i think andrew he's uh he's a little, he used to grow pot mm-hmm. and uh, so he knows all about ph and how important it is the mm-hmm. environment the ph is like the conductor an, uh, of an orchestra in the human body if your ph is off everything is going to be wrong your ph between your your urine and saliva needs to be uh needs to be equal and if it's not Every bit of every bit of dysregulation in those two markers causes some effect on the body that's not good. Okay. okay, and so some of the big ones like constipation is caused by dehydration. Yep, digestive issues because we have to have uh, high water to properly digest. Um, joint and back pain, and it's like, so all your joints are you know, we're lubricated. <laughs> water is our lubricant as well as oxygen. And um, yeah, skin conditions. So people are coming in with all kinds of skin conditions, rashes, and and all kinds of uh, issues, including acne, is actually is is related to dehydration. Because because when we the body dehydrates too, if the the body uh, and the brain perceive threat, so the way that we deal with threat is stress hormones. Mm-hmm. So nervousness, ADD, ADHD, <clears throat> uh, 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 
things like um, people who have, uh, you know, anxiety issues and stuff like that. Uh, chronic fatigue. Blood Re- pressure? Is blood pressure affected by... Absolutely. Blood- Absolutely. Uh, kidney stones. And these are all things that people are being medicated for. Allergies. 70% of the body's water um, comes via respiration. So when we breathe, like even things like this, when, when we're dehydrated, our throat closes so that we don't lose as much water. We lose mm-hmm. 70% of our water through breath. Mm-hmm. And so here's, what's, <laughs> here's the crazy part. People are dehydrated and they're going in to do a yoga class and they're breathing heavy and they think they're doing themselves good. And what they're actually doing is they're making the problem worse. Yeah. I had, um, have you ever, do you, have you ever met Patrick McEwen? Do you know who he is? Sounds familiar. He wrote a book called The Oxygen Advantage and he talks about how uh, because of the fact that we're capable of breathing through our mouths, we do, mm. but we're really designed to breathe through our noses and our noses filter. They do all kinds of things. Yeah. We're supposed to nose breathe. And should th- nose breathe. There's yeah. a, there's a big reason too. If go try this right now, breathe through your mouth. Okay. Breathe through your nose. It's easier to breathe through your nose. You know why? No. It's because at the end of the nose, there's a little node on there. And as the air comes through there, the pressure from the breath going in, it activates a little node which releases nitric oxide in our body. Nitric oxide yeah, he talks is a vasodilator that which right. opens the throat and right. the blood vase vessels and everything like that. That's why breathing through the nose is easier. Most yeah, people been, don't know that. As since I read his book, I've been taping my mouth shut at night, <clears throat> and it's fantastic. Oh, okay. So I do know who it is now because my my wife was doing the same. Thing. I, <laughs> I woke. My up. wife thinks I'm crazy. I, I woke. <laughs> I, I woke up. It's funny. I woke up and I turn over and I look and, and she's got tape in her mouth. And I, <laughs> I thought it was a dream because it didn't make sense to me. She's, yep. she's awesome, man. She's like, uh, she is like, like a firecracker. You've met her, right? No, I've never met your wife. Oh, you haven't no, met her? No, oh, no, yeah. No, I'm looking forward she, to it. She's a firecracker. She's my partner yeah. um, uh, along with, uh, with, with Clifton, who you may have met. Those are my two partners. Um, my wife uh, was a yoga uh, kundalini master, and she, she's been practicing a personal trainer, a spiritual coach. She's, that's, that's who she was. She's just a bundle of joy and energy, and she's, she's the life bread of the, of the whole human garage. Cool. Um, it's, it's, a uh, it's, it's pretty co- pretty cool, but let me just say something. I know that works for you, but we need to get to a point where you don't need to do that. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. I, this is not, I'm not planning on taping my mouth closed for the rest of my life. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, pl- I'm hoping, hopefully that's going to, that's going to instill a habit yes. that, where it becomes a much more natural part of my flow. Yeah. I see. I, I'm, and I'm, I'm okay to do those things sometimes. I, you know, in some cases the benefit outweighs the, uh, the risk that you do, mm-hmm. but a lot of these things like, um, you know, and I'm, I'm not, I don't really want to beat up these people, but I'm, I'm going to a little bit. Things like a Gosku and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. If you have to train yourself to stand and walk, you're causing nervous system tension that's, that's, that's dysregulating your body. Um, for example, uh, walking is the hardest thing for a human being to do, by the way. It requires both hemispheres of the brain to exchange information at the same time. So what happens is the body, as we grow up and we learn to walk, we pattern walking into our nervous system. Mm-hmm. And if we pattern walking into our nervous system, the interesting thing about it, about patterning it in, is it creates a synaptic optimized program. That's a program that your brain is hardwired that knows how to move every muscle. And when you have to think about walking, what that is is a compensation. That means that you are using nervous system energy to create an effect that should be natural. Yep. Yeah, it's bad. Like I'm, uh, the celebrities, uh, a lot of celebrities that we have uh, were trained by a Gosku, so they walk on TV better. Um, mm-hmm. And. <clears throat> And I, I understand it, it has it helps initially, mm-hmm. but the long term effects are bad. Hmm. Okay? okay, so um, uh, we were let, so I, we're talking about water. So we're talking I, about meridians. Let we, me. Let I want to get back to why you like with this thing. Five hundred years ago, everybody had great posture. I don't remember a fo- an end to that. So we got a lot of open threads. Oh, a lot of open threads here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So the idea was is that the the alignment issues I think started happening with chemical intrusion, and that's what we uh, we see because the if you look at the kidney meridian, the two things that take the most abuse when we put chemicals in our in our food is <clears throat> the kidneys and the liver. Okay. Okay. Because they're the filters. Yeah. They're the right. They're the filters, and the kidney meridian goes from the top of the head. All the way down the back to the heels, and there's two down lines the, down the back side of your body. Yeah, that's right. So let's imagine that 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 organ's in distress, and that line 
contracts. Guess what happens to my body? I start pulling back. Uh-huh. So how would I? Re- how would my nervous system respond? Put my neck forward. All right. Forward head posture. <clears throat> forward head posture. Which is exacerbated by the computer and everything else we do. Right. So the computer and the phones and all that are, are agitators, but the real problem is the, is what's happening in the nervous system. Huh. And that's my belief. And that's what, you know, I've been tracking this down for some time to try and understand because I'm constantly trying to understand it. I just, I don't, I just don't buy all the, all the crap that we tell ourselves. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and that's, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at things like that. And that's why going back 500 years ago and looking and seeing what do people look like back then? Because yeah, if right. we watch a movie from you know, 500 years ago, we have today's actors in it. Right. So the perception right. is <clears throat> that, we, that that's what it looked like. Um, like even, and movies are tricky. Like uh, I remember this one, U-Boat 571 or whatever. Remember that? Today? I do remember that. They I, were yeah. stealing the machine as the submarines or stealing the machine from the Germans so they could decode. And, yeah. and that's how. So anyways, the, the movie, the Americans are the ones that, that did it. But the, the truth is the British are the ones that did it. Right. Yeah. So it's, right. it's careful how we see and we take information. Information yep. out there, there's so much bad information. And you know, what, is, what the heck is this about having to label things organically? Everything was organic until like 50 years ago. Right. So why don't we make everybody who's not organic label not organic <laughs> right right good point wouldn't it be easier right and that's how messed up our system is yeah you know and it's and, and the chemical companies and the pharmaceutical companies they control our government they control our food supply they control yeah. the fda it is it's flat out it, this yeah. is this this is one of the worst um this is one of the worst abuses on humankind in the history of the world because we're allowing chemicals to kill that kill people Mm -hmm. demonstrated kill people we put them into our food supply and then we get all kinds of bad science saying it's not so bad i mean think about this um uh when i was uh back in the early 90s i had a supplement company and um and i was selling supplements we were going to these these uh these scientific these factories where they're in these these farms where they're growing the scientists were talking to us and we were talking about the supplements and then we're talking they have uh, their skin products in there too as well and uh so the co- the comment about so- sodium lauryl sulfides came mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. and their answer was no worries. It's the molecule's too big, and so when it's in the toothpaste, it doesn't penetrate the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, right. but but let, let's also go back into the fifties when four out of five doctors recommended smoking. Yep. Yeah. So you know, my my whole thing is basically take what the Surgeon General says and do the opposite, and mm-hmm. you're okay. Right. And just look at it. We said uh, cut out fat. You know what? Everybody got diabetes. Right. We, we now, now our latest one is, you know, cut out salt. But what happens when you cut out salt? You dehydrate. The blood vein is inside of a muscle. So if you dehydrate, it contracts. If you contract a, a blood vein, like a garden hose, if you squeeze it, what happens? Blood pressure goes up. Right. Dehydration right. is the issue. And so, we're, to- we're telling people not to have sodium. Yeah, it's interesting. My mom has suffered with all kinds of blood pressure issues. She's about 83. <clears throat> and about three, two years ago, she was on all kinds of medications and all kinds of stuff. And two years ago, she went to a doctor and the doctor said, I don't, know, I don't know why this happened. I don't know why this occurred. But somehow the doctor put her on 2,000 milligrams, micrograms, milligrams, two big horse pills of sodium a day. It is cured. It has solved every problem that you know she ever something? had. I love that doctor, and I wish other doctors would do that. But it's he, a massive amount of sodium. <laughs> she's having trouble right now because it uh, irritates her esophagus. Okay, well, there's a so she's trying I to can, figure that out. I can out. help you through that. Okay, yeah, it's a really simple, very, very simple fix with that, with a specific form of calcium. Oh, okay. very, very specific. You can't buy it in a store, but we can we can do that right away. It'll go away right away. Great. Um, so yeah, it's cool to be able to know the <laughs> to be able to listen to stories like that and understand where why it's happening. And it's because we look at the body a different way. And the way we're taught to look at the body doesn't provide conclusive answers because we're taught to find symptoms. So acid reflux is the problem. Well, that's not the problem. That's actually the symptom. Right. And so what we exactly. need to do is find the problem. Yep. And that pro- you know her her problem is is going to be really it's really really simple. I'll show you. Um, is she here local? She's in Phoenix. Okay, we'll just, I'll just, uh, we'll send some stuff out. I'll show you what to do. Okay. Um, so we talk about some, here's, here's just a list of some of the, of the symptoms of, of dehydration. Uh, increased core temperature of the body, decreased blood pressure, um, decreased sweat rate, rapid breathing, fast heartbeat, dizziness and lightheadedness, irritability, confusion, lack of urination, sunken eyes, shock, unconsciousness, delirium, 
dry, wrinkled skin that does not bounce back quickly when pinched, reduced, uh, or reduced stroke volume and cardiac output, reduced blood flow to the muscles, exasperated uh, symptomatic exertion, um, basically, it's a, a rhabdomyosis, which is a, rhabdo, yeah, you know, rhabdo, which is basically it's, it's dehydration, serious muscle injury, and uh, increased rate of uh, stroke and death at twelve percent dehydration, you're dead. At three percent, you're del- you're starting to have mental problems, and at four percent, you're basically delirious, like you're start- you're fixating on things. Okay, you've so- convinced me. You've convinced me. We got a problem. Yeah. Now, what do we what do we do? Because so, because I'm I'm going to go downstairs so, and drink water, and you're t- going to tell me no, that's not the s- solution. So the first part <laughs> is simple simple things at home. Is there are there are simple ways to to look at hydration. You can go on the internet and say how do am I how am I hydrated, and you can take a look. The real truth is at the cellular level, you really need a good impedance machine, which not the ones you buy at the store. Um, but the really good ones are five, six thousand dollars. In so, order to see if you're hydrated, you mean? Yeah, to properly see at the cellular level, because there's nutritional yeah, hydration yeah. and cellular hydration, right? Yeah. And if you're really chronically dehydrated, it, you can't drink water. It takes three, four, six, even nine months to become hydrated. So again. are you just screwed, or you? No, have to get no, an IV? you, you got to get an IV, you, or what do you got to do? IVs are great. Okay, um, but the other part too is to increase sodium intake. And um, making sure you, you, need, you need a little sodium, a little potassium. So I suggest just as a kind of a rule of thumb, if you feel that you're dehydrated and you have these symptoms, is, uh, is to go get an actual test. And you, get a, you can go get, uh, you know, like at the human garage, we do that. Uh, that test will tell you. Uh, you can go to, your, uh, to a doctor and you can is get it a Is it a saliva test? test or is it a urine test? Well, they can a- test it through urine. They can test it through, <clears throat> through saliva. There's different ways to, to actually test it. Is it called a dehydration test? No, no, but you can see if you're hydrated or not. So what do they test for? What is the result? Because I've never seen a lab test that says hydration. Isn't, uh, doesn't a normal lab, I'd have to look again. I don't know. I thought it did. I don't know. Okay. And if it doesn't, um, there are high, there are tests that can be done clinically to do that. Um, but the challenge is to understand how, what your alkaline ions or your mineralization is like. So one of the things I, I suggest to people is start, so, uh, start salting your food a little bit more and not table salt. Himalayan pink salt is the best. Okay. Okay. And uh, is that because it's of the composition of the, of the sodium? It's not just sodium chloride? Or yeah. What's... It's, that's, yeah. It's not just sodium chloride. It's how it's composed. It's put in the body it's like when you combine things together they can be healthy when you break apart the elements they can be deleterious and that's what uh, table salt is not good for you but but uh, Himalayan pink salt or Celtic salt or something start salting mm-hmm. your food a bit more and even put a, like a quarter of a teaspoon into your into your water salting water um, but one of the things I really strongly suggest if you're uncertain is there's two things that you can do. You can go get a homeopathic cell salt formula. There's called Bioplast, and Bioplast is kind of the catch-all. It has all of the all of the base elements. And if you don't know which ones, if you know can if you know how to determine which one, if you come into us, we can tell you which base element you're missing and give you exactly it. What do you mean base element? What does that mean? <clears throat> like uh, like selenium or potassium uh, chloride or something like that. Um, so these are the base elements. Those are the things that we get from the soil. Those are what allow connectivity to happen in our body. So, so w- w- one second on. Yeah, uh, sorry, so, sorry, sorry. So the my one mind thing is, I, my I, mind is just going I, crazy. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I'm trying not to open any more threads right now. Yeah, right. And trying to stitch a few up. Okay. So, so one of the, the one of the best ways. There's lots of good min- mineralization formulas. I've tried a whole, dozens and dozens of them, where you just get base minerals. Some of them are liquid. Some of them are uh, in like uh, pastes and stuff like that. Just go to your to a local health food store. And uh, say you need you need minerals, uh, min- and they'll point to different ones or look on Amazon. There are there's all kinds of different mineralizations. So if you're uncertain here, you can't you're not going to hurt yourself by taking extra minerals and adding a little bit of salt. And minerals little- like what? Like what do you mean? Calcium, like, magnesium. Yeah, all the base. You, you get mineralization. Like like if you go to is a, it a general formula like a like a like a like a vitamin like a yeah you can t- get them get them like a vitamin but the better ones are tend to be like a little paste or they have them in uh, like if you go to Air One uh, here in in Los Angeles yeah you know, even at the counters they'll have little um, little mineral things of wa- uh, they look like water vials and you drink them and they have oh, really? kind of a minerally taste okay. But mineralizing the water would be good. And that comes back to structuring water. So like one of the things that I blew your mind away with is I we have don't a... Know. I don't know. We shouldn't talk about this because my mind is completely shot already. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> just kidding. I'm We're, just kidding. We because when you came in, I I showed you we are we have coming let, up as cold. Let me just say what you just did. You you pull so so we're talking about water. I pour my water out of my new. I have a new water filter. It's yeah, a um because Simone Simone our head Simone nutritionist, yeah she she talked about her water filter. What's it called? It's called a. Um, it's a reverse osmosis tabletop unit. It's the best it's, tabletop unit. I can't remember the yeah, name of it. It's it's great. Doctor Mark Mark Hyman recommends it. It's it's great. It's been great so far. But I and I add some sea salt to it. And you so I, you got a glass of it. Do you want to try it out? And and then you take your wallet out and you pull out a credit card. What I thought was a credit card. Yep. And it's this card with a bunch of holes in it. It's called a lined beverage card. Whatever. <laughs> it's a magic card, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> And he waved it across the glass. Like, I mean, I felt like I was like, what am I? What is this, David Blaine? He's going to like make the glass disappear or something. And, you know, I'm like, what are you doing? And, uh, you know, like I'm and you started talking about frequencies and and structure. And then you're like, wait, you got some wine? I'm like, what do you mean? What are you going to do to my wine? (laughs) (laughs) So basically, we did this taste test with with wine we poured two glasses of wine and the wine i i opened actually happens to be a a a bottle that i'm not very it's not very good i don't think yeah my wife bought it actually for me to use for some cooking over the weekend yeah and so we poured two glasses and he waved his little magic card over one of the glasses and i tried the first one first which like i said i don't really like very much and uh you know okay there's the taste and then I picked the other one up, and it was literally a different wine. Yeah, it was. It was smooth. It was. I mean, it's probably not my favorite of all time, but but it the the difference was astounding. And the only difference was this magic card. <laughs> <laughs> so so the science behind it. What we're talking about is frequency. Everything in this world has frequency and it's measurable. Your heart, your organs. Uh, the tabletop, everything has water, uh, beverages. There's a frequency to everything that li- that's on that's in the universe. Okay, and um, and there are certain things that can attune frequency, like a tuning fork. And so, when the frequency of something uh, is conducive to your body, then your body absorbs it very well. And so, structuring water, and there's different ways you can do it. There's pearl beads you can buy, and you can put your water in overnight. There's um, there's different ways to structure, and one of them with Mazi Emoto, I think it was, is you know he has the experiment, famous guy, twenty years of experimenting, saying like love to water, and then he crystallized it and show, and you can go look at this, and there's lots of science behind this. So uh, water takes information, and so if you actually, and and I have a greater test, I have one at home where it's a piece of paper, and you put the glass of water on, and one tastes sweet and one doesn't, and all it is 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 taking the information off the structure, it's taking the physical structure and then absorbing it. Water is very absorbent from information point of view. Mm. And so I was structuring the water that you're drinking and I structure everything I drink that goes in my mouth because I just want it to be more conducive with my system. And as I do more of those things, my body has to work less hard. Mm -hmm. And as my body works less hard, I have more energy, more life, all those other things that, Mm -hmm. that are going on. And um, so this Aligned Beverage card is going to be available here shortly um, at the Human Garage. And if you're one of our clients who've gone through it, it'll actually have a number on the back, which would be like a credit card number. And it'll allow you to use it at, uh, we're working with, starting to work with hotels for that um, high-end hotels where they're certified Human Garage, where they uh, organic uh, sheets, organic cleaners, uh, juve lights or near infrared lights in the room, special lights we have in the garage, those lights that, that change colors. Yep. yep. So to, for for therapy lights, uh, so in the rooms, uh, special. What, what, will they, what will they do with these cards? What, why, what will the card get them? Well, the card the, the card uh, well, is a line beverage card. So everything you put in your mouth, you just touch just, it right. and it helps. The other part of it is, is that as we start going forward in our lifestyle, we have all of our celebrities and all of our athletes and stuff like that. They just want to help people. I mean, they're really, really good people. Our, yeah, yeah. our celebrities are good people. They're just nice ones. Mm-hmm. And, um, and what we wanted to do is we want people to start helping people. So imagine we have a client engagement app coming in six months. And imagine if you're, you've got all this alignment, you've got all this health going, and now you want to go on vacation. <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, it's hard to find a vacation spot that does that. And I'm, I am highly allergic to pesticides and herbicides now. I just even within within a range I walk in if I put it in my, up to my mouth it's more than just sensitivity it's I will be off work for three days if I have a glass of wine with herbicides in it 
Wow. And it just happened to me recently too. I went somewhere that said it was organic. I just assumed that it was. I trusted the place. I drank it and boom, I was down. So, um, so the, the idea is, is, is as we go forward into our lifestyle events, these, imagine with this client engagement app, like it's like ways for healthy people. It's ways. The great thing about ways, if you've never used it, it's it's basically social media and maps and navigation together. Yeah. So it's people telling people, hey, there's a problem with the road. There's a cop up there. Mm-hmm. It's it's helping the community, helping each other. What if that community was helping each other find healthy food and organic and mm-hmm. different systems? And it's one place you could do it. So that's what's happening in our client engagement app, which will be ready in about six months or maybe a little less. We got the guys who are doing Candy Crush and stuff like that uh-huh. to create it because you just want to make it sticky, not just another one of these stupid apps that you have at one place you never use it unless you we want it to be benefiting and things like trap tracking their the the steps that they take working with um we're working with a couple of measurement devices like you're wearing the ring Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah, they were we're working with a couple of measurement devices to uh to get the stats that we feel are important Mm -hmm. to determine health and it's not the ones we're measuring all these systems are measuring the same thing we have a different view of what's important yep and to feed back so we can also, while our clients are going through treatment, we can actually look at what's happening over time in their bodies. Mm-hmm. Because it's impossible. I think about what happens. We go in medicine. We go see a doctor. He's 15 minutes. Oh, this is your problem. Get it. Come back to see me in six weeks. But there is no other input of information. Yep. You don't know what's happened. You don't know all the other things. So it's making us better at being practitioners and helping people and also helping other people on the outside contribute and like like i i went to mexico for vacation and i came back after two days i didn't tell anybody (laughs) i came back i just i couldn't deal with the food and i was starting to get sick right away but you don't want to i mean that's not a positive necessarily a positive result of this because you want to be yeah actually you want to be protected no it's not it's i tell you i'm i am for the first time in my life Without any pain, any discomfort, right. I don't have stress. I don't have anxiety. So you don't feel like I, that's a negative. That's a that's no. It's a, a positive. But I think what we want to do is we want to be able to point out to people who are in this situation or who want to be here. We want to point out this is where you can go. It's not about. It's not about. Uh, there are lots of good, like we mentioned Salt Air, and I'm going to put that right. It's Salt Air Restaurant. Mm-hmm. You guys are doing a great job because they they didn't even know they don't even advertise organic. And I went in there, and I'm looking for places that I can eat. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I eat at home all the time, but I so I go in there and and and, and I ask. Uh, in my my way of saying it, I don't say organic because organic means nothing anymore. Right. So I say I'm allergic to pesticides and herbicides. What do you have on your menu that I can eat? And instantaneously they come back and they come back and say, well, you have this, but this one carrot, this thing over here. And I realized their entire menu is organic. And no one knew that. I told you that. It's your favorite place. And you didn't know that. No, I didn't know that. So the thing is, is that wouldn't it be nice for everybody who gives a crap about the body? Does that just mean they shop at the farmer's market and they they get all their, but because you have to be particular Mm, about where you you buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it. It's you can't just go and buy something. You have to understand where it comes from. And, yeah, right. And the sourcing. Yeah, yeah you got to. There's some work that has to go into it. Like for example, I have yet to find a wine in California that's organic that actually doesn't set me off. Hmm. Because you know, I think our our soil is just completely polluted here, and it's not. We're not coming. You know, in this one wine I have, I'm not going to mention the wine. It's not their fault. They're a winery been a hundred years in the family, but they're a small batch vineyard, mm-hmm. and there's two big vineyards beside them. <laughs> right. So it doesn't matter what their practices are. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like it's like it's like in the old days when we'd uh, have a smoking section in a restaurant or on a plane. I love this on a plane. The smoking section. You remember this? The smoking yeah, section used right. to be on the back of the plane. Right. And my I'm, dad, my dad was a smoker, and he would sit in the back of the plane. We would have to get seats that were close to there. Yeah. So that we could be, and we're get we're sucking down the smoke. It's like row fifteen, and that's yeah. like this. Okay, that's a smoking section. Smoke. I, you're in a plane. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. No, there's, and there's and, no filter that's going to take care and of And restaurants and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so this is what's happening out there. And this is, why, this is why I say we just, as a community, we need to stand up and fight the real fight. Now, wait. We didn't finish the water piece. We talked about miner- minerals that you people yeah. can get. Yeah. And, and adding sodium chloride, or not sodium chloride, but um, Himalayan pink salt. pink salt or Celtic and sea salt. And just drinking your But drink. how much water? What, how you, do you, you're, you had it, right? 
Are you fifty percent? Yeah, fifty percent. And, and and it's not always the same for everybody. And yeah. It has depends on what kind of work you do. And, and I mean, some people out. are going to panic when they hear, they, they hear that number. You know, if you weigh two hundred pounds, it's a hundred ounces of water. If it's half your body weight in ounces, well, it's like weigh, almost so, you know, yeah, it's yeah. a lot of lot of ounces well, for people I'm, that are not drinking. What if you're a tenth of a ton? I got to think about how much that is. That's two twenty-five. Okay. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, I'm a tenth of a ton. Yeah. So you got a gallon of water a day. <laughs> yeah, a gallon of water a day. And the problem, you know, is, is people that are overweight, one of the leading causes of obesity is dehydration. So... You, listen, your body can not lose fat when you're dehydrated because the body holds on to the fat as a protection in case something happens and it, 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 it feels eminent uh, death because there's no water and it so it starts to starts to collect the fat in the cells and it causes cholesterol issues blood pressure issues so if you're struggling with weight one of the issues is dehydration quite often so you can find um oh and i had a really we, so you i'm a <laughs> i try everything uh-huh and I, I do some pretty extreme things. Like this last uh, three months, I've been taking my body through these 10 and 15 pound weight swings on a daily basis and trying to see how water and, and uh, how it reacts in the body and how different elements are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, I, and, and just, just so you know, I'm doing this with also a very healthy thought process. I'm doing lots of lab work. I'm testing. I'm watching myself. I don't, don't recommend anybody do this at home ever. Mm-hmm. Um, but what happens is, is that, so I, I went to this place where I depleted my potassium, um, eating a keto, people who eat keto, uh, <laughs> there's basically no potassium in a keto diet. Mm-hmm. And potassium is what holds the water in the organ and smooth muscles. Why is there no potassium? Well, I mean, what potassium, you know, like one of the big contributors, things like bananas, stuff. It's not that there's not no potassium. It's just that at ketogenics, it tends to eat, you know, they're eating uh, like a meat, they're eating like a vegetable. Uh, it's just, and then fat. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just not highly potassium rich, just generally. Okay. And so I was eating a keto diet, and I, that, me, that goes back to me saying if so I'm eating keto next time, I need to have potassium rich vegetables and stuff like that. Yep. And uh, more nuts and stuff like that. So, there's, there's an idea, there, this is just a, an experiment. So we uh, withdrew the potassium from my system. And what happened was my body would hold 15, 20 pounds of water and it would happen over the course of a couple of days. It would just start to hold water. And why? My organs needed the water. My body was holding the water saying, hey, I got you. I got your water. And the potassium wasn't there to, to, to drive that water and drop it off in the organ. So the body kept holding the water. And one of the things that happened, it was interesting, because in the experiment, I would sweat at night. <laughs> and, and it was uncomfortable because I'd put a towel down and then my whole body would be drenched and then halfway through the night I have to change it. Wow. And so I was just seeing how far the body will go in each one of these different areas. Because, like I said, I just don't believe what we're being told. I've, we, at the Human Garage, we get 10 pieces of science we're going to publish over the next three, three years. And these, these pieces of science completely contradict everything known about the human body. And, and so as I find more and more of these things that just don't make sense, I dig in deeper. Mm-hmm. And my body is the best experiment. If I, you know, and, and Tim Ferriss and these guys have been doing this. Ben Greenfield, I love Ben. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ben, if you're out there, if you're listening to this, uh, we have lots of fun. That guy's a machine. He's unbelievable. Ben's but, unbelievable. I listen he, to his podcast. I listen to him on Joe Rogan. Yeah. And the the amount of things he knows about things about hacks isn't, you can isn't do. Isn't that credible? It's overwhelming. What it he is. knows about everything related to hacking. I, I, I like. That's, that's what blows my mind. It's insane. It's insane. Because yeah. Joe's got a got a shoulder problem, and Ben was trying to get him into the human garage. So I think that's probably going to happen soon. Oh, cool! Yeah, because he mentioned it on the on the podcast. He did, yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. And so, you know, and we've got these guys out there that are doing this for you, and this is where the real information is coming from. Yep. It's time for us to stop going to traditional sources. Yeah, the stuff that you learn in school about the human body when you go for diet and holistic nutrition and med- and, and medicine and that it's just not right. And I'm not saying it's all wrong, but it's not all right. right. And right. the problem is, is that we take it as being all right. And that's where the, that's where the breakdown happens. Right. It's pretty, pretty incredible what's going on there. So we are, we're out there biohacking for you. Please don't be a biohacker. <laughs> right. Take the information, use it. Uh, Cause you hear us doing some pretty wild things. You hear Ben, <laughs> his latest one, you hear us doing some wild things. So you don't have to do those things. We're doing it so that we can understand and we can explain. What, um, if someone out there listening 
um, wants to engage with Human Garage, how how do you guys? How would you work with someone, or what can they do? So let's talk about a couple different ways. So uh, what we're doing is putting up a new uh, wait list, um, basically sign up on a, um, and we're we're sorting people based on things like where they are because we put up a wait list, we have thousands of people hit it, and you know, and we have people come from Japan and UK and everywhere, and there there are people that were getting on a wait list that weren't intending to be here for another eight months or a year. Yeah, and so we didn't have a sorting mechanism. So now we have a way to sort it and ask the few questions and stuff like that. And what we'll do is we'll put up a code and if they're saying whole life challenge um, in there um, and we'll have that available and then they can actually jump up uh, up the wait list okay. um, so we can get them in a little sooner um, we also do remote consultations so um, people uh, we, all we need is we send them out a, a format of pictures and we have them video a few things um, uh, we get them to fill out some some uh, like a consultation form uh, with some information, like an intake form, and then we will do it over Skype or over the phone. Wow. Yeah, because you see at the garage, we don't use tools. All we have to yeah, do right. is see somebody walk and stand, yep. ask a few questions, and we know where to go already. Yeah. So, um, so, and they're very effective, but what, what the purpose of a remote consultation is, you're planning to come and get care. And what we want to do is we want to see if you're coming from a distance. If you're here, you can come in here. And if you come in and you're really dehydrated and we have to, we have to say we can't do treatment for three weeks, mm-hmm. no big deal. But if you're coming from Japan... <laughs> It's a big deal. It's a big deal. So yeah. what we want to do is we want to make sure if someone's traveling that they're prepared. Mm-hmm. So we have we have uh, roughly 40% of our clients come from other cities, other countries, which in physical medicine is never never happens. You go right. to your chiropractor down the street. Right. You don't drive across town. Right. So that was one of the things that I knew that we were just doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. So we'll have that set up so the so that they can sign up for a consultation or a remote consultation, and then we can schedule treatment in. Um, one of the things I want to uh, this is a good place to talk about it because there because of who we work with, we are in the, we are in this to change the way healthcare is looked at, the way we manage our bodies and understand it. And there's a perception out there that our treatment is expensive because of who we do business with: mm-hmm. uh, Olympic athletes, professional runners, uh, NHL. Um, celebrities, uh, everything like that. But uh, if you were to organize all of the services that we do in our normal protocol, you would be twelve to fifteen thousand dollars with a chiropractor, physical therapist, nutritionist, uh, fascial worker, trainer, rehab mm-hmm. PT, and your insurance premium would be your deductible would be four or five grand. Yeah, right. Our total cost of treatment is like is like almost half of that. Right. So we are the least. Uh, we have the least. Co- we are. We feel that we are one of the most effective treatment sources in the world, and we have the least cost of anything out there. Right. And the reason why we're doing that is our goal is never to, was never to make money on treatment. We deliver it is to make treatment affordable and accessible to everybody, and that's why we're expanding so fast. And so, in doing that, what we're the way that we make money now is that we've made our therapy famous in the names of people and now professionals, doctors and therapists and PTs. And this year, we're starting to certify people in our modalities, which will give us income for selling our intellectual property. And we have the patented products like the Power Kirk that you're taking. In right yep, now, yep. I mean, one one power Kirk fifty is equal to it's curcumin. Curcumin is equal to one hundred and twenty five theracumins. Right. So one of ours is equal to the whole bottle and some of the others. Most powerful anti inflammatory in the world. It works like crazy, and uh, um, so. So we have patented products, and we have a whole bunch more coming down. We have libido tea. Did I give you some? You did. I haven't tried it yet. Oh, you haven't tried it yet? I got it. Well, I got you know, I, I got to make sure my wife is on board. Uh, I think I probably should do that. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah, you wouldn't tell her. <laughs> so so it, we uh, so we have these uh, this, uh, coordinating our schedules and lives is uh, you know sometimes a challenge, but yeah, we'll we'll, we'll I I know exactly where it is. So yeah, so the libido tea. Yeah. If you ever thought you could die from having an orgasm. That will make it happen. Really? Yeah, it's bizarre. All right, maybe it's tonight's. Maybe tonight's the night. Tonight's the night. <laughs> 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 so, so the the idea is is that is to continue to bring products that add value uh-huh. and make money from that. We work with uh, partnerships like we're working with hotels and resorts across the world, starting to to make sure that our clients get the treatment that they need when they're there. It's like mm-hmm. Human Garage certified floors in, in the top 11 luxury hotels in Japan is what we're going over there next week to start working on. Cool. So so the idea is is that I just want people to understand that we're here to help people in every capacity. And because we don't bill insurance, we've just made our treatment less than the copay and yep. the comparable services. And that was our way of getting out there because that, that number I know, the insurance companies know, 
they know exactly how much money they can squeeze out of you. <laughs> yeah. And so and their job is to their job is to not pay as much as possible. Well, and, and, and it's even worse than that. Think about it. They have shareholders. They're public companies. Yeah. They have to return more profits. You could either yeah. you either cut cost or delivery, or you, you get more money, more premiums. And to get yeah. more premiums, you have to make people fear it more and you have to make it more, you have to bill more. Yep. It's, it's a crazy system. It's right. like the, it's like the fox watching the, the, the hen house. The hand house. Yeah, yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so we'll be happy to, to take your clients and we'll accelerate them. I can't say that they're going to get in right away, but yeah, right. But you know, right now well, um, we have people all over the world. So, you know, it's just, I mean, and like you said, you work with people all over the world. We so do. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, there's people out there that have issues and yeah. they're, they're joining whole life challenge because there's something not right in their life. And they want to make it better. Yeah. Um, well, you know, and there's other ways we're going to, you'll see over this next year, lots of content come out from us about little things that you can do. You're learning. Some well, this hydration stuff. piece is a huge thing. I yeah. mean, look, nobody has to do anything except maybe do some mineralization and drink some more water. I mean, it, yeah. it's one of the easiest things in the world to change. It is. It is. And it, co- it affects everything. And it's, it doesn't, and it doesn't cost you a damn thing. And that's one of the reasons why doctors won't prescribe it. Okay. Well, listen, I'm, 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 I don't know how to say this and be nice. Um, we send people out with hydration issues. Like sometimes we have to stop treatment because they're dehydrated. Right. And we'll send them over to like, what to, is that? How do you, t- what do you notice as a therapist when somebody's dehydrated? What, what, what occurs? What do you muscles feel? Muscles feel like leather. Really? They don't release. Yeah. Huh. Lots of pain, lots of aches. Okay. Muscle soreness. Dehydration increases stress hormone production. A stress, uh, if you have a level three pain and you, uh, and you are stressed out, it goes to huh. a six, seven or eight. Huh. So it, it amplifies everything that's wrong with the body. Okay. Simply. And when we send people out for hydration, like we send them to uh, some of the doctors around, and I'm not going to mention who, they'll, I get comments back, like they'll call, the doctor will call and say, you know, uh, their electrolytes are up, so what are we to do for hydration? And like, the electrolytes are up because they're dehydrated, because the body needs more connectivity. So it's, it's collecting electrolytes because you're not giving it right. Mm-hmm. So it's, there's a misunderstanding in the medical community as dem- and the health community as demonstrated by, by the fact that 75% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. means that our medical, our health system, our natural and otherwise doesn't understand it. Yep. So it's time for people to really start to understand it. And it's a, part, a big part of your life. If every one of your whole life challenge people was just properly hydrated, a lot of the reasons that the problems that they have will just start to go away right. gradually. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a, yeah. So yeah, well, it's, there you go. Um, I think we've covered it. I mean, like I'm, I'm I, kind of resi- yeah. red, reticent to open up another thread. Yes. Because it just keeps <laughs> going. It's you know, like so, unravels into like a world of, oh my God. Let me, let me just say something about what I think you're doing. I want to, I want to take my hat off to you and your wife and your team. You're making a difference in people's lives because you're engaging them in the most simple processes of just getting up and doing the right thing or thinking about doing the right thing. And there's not a lot of people out there doing that. And I, and I really want to support you and encourage you to continue to do that in any way that we can help. And I, I, there's Thanks, a lot Gary. of information Thanks. that we have that we can continue through other, other information pieces, even with, with some of my, my key staff members, yep. to help understand each and every one of these parts as much as you want. But thank you for doing what you're doing. Uh, you're making Thanks. a difference in the world. And just keep on making a difference in thank the world. Thank you. Yeah, these small steps are really... They make a. They, they really do make a difference. They just have to be practiced over and over and over again, and you know that's where people break down. So it's just a habit. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank Thanks you for being here. Take care. The Whole Life Podcast is produced by our podcast team: Winslow Jenkins, Becca Borowski, and Ernie Hurtado. You can find all of our episodes, links, and complete show notes at wholelifechallenge.com forward slash podcast. The way that I've found is the best way to listen to podcasts is to subscribe so that episodes automatically get delivered right to your mobile device. You can do that in any podcast app on your phone. And hey, if you like the podcast, please do me a favor. Go to iTunes and give it a five-star rating and recommend it to your friends. I'm Andy Petronic, and thanks so much for listening. Listening.